Hello and welcome to the Nash Tackle Off The Hook podcast. Just to make you aware, this podcast may contain some explicit slash offensive language. And if that's not your thing, you don't have to listen. But I have given you a warning. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. You don't know the half of it, but yeah, um, I'm anyway. Time, yeah, I'm, good, on, I'm skating on the thinnest <laughs> ice known to man. Like. He said, and um, they put a poison in the tank that just instantly kills them. He went, and we've run out of it, so we cut their heads off with shovels. Suddenly, bang! The whole boat exploded. Take your sort of eight-inch-long piranha and imagine that at four, five, maybe six feet. I said, I've revived your dead fish. <laughs> F off, he said. You haven't. That was just humongous. It was... I couldn't believe what I was looking at. I'm just battling this fish out and on. I know it's a black man. I'm, yeah. I'm saying I'll never be a naughty boy again. If you catch fish and you return them to the water, then you are my brother. Derek Harrison, welcome to the Nash podcast, mate. Thank you for inviting me to your home. How are you? You're welcome, mate, and uh, welcome to Ireland. Mate, thank you very, very much. It's been a lovely trip. I've caught up with the KWA boys. We've done a bit of fishing. And then we met you last night at our hotel, mate, yeah. and had um, had a good old chinwag, mate. It's great to meet you. Yeah, I didn't know you were living up uh, our end. Up our north, end. up north, up north, lad. Huh? <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? Like, we, we were talking. I didn't know. I thought you were from Yorkshire, didn't I, originally? Yeah, yeah. Because the old accent's got a yeah. bit of north, a bit of Holland, a bit of well, everything in there, hasn't it? It's double Dutch, mate. Double Dutch. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. I speak double Dutch. I hope I don't start speaking Dutch to you today. You did to Rob. You did him last night I in did. the hotel. Well, that way, because I was talking to a uh, receptionist in Dutch. And I come back and then that's it. You straight, straight back into your Dutch again. And I've never yeah. seen a man just go, oh, Rob was like, I don't know what to say. Yeah, He's gone yeah, Dutch. But yeah, no, nah, mate, yeah. it was really... I do, it, I do it all the time. I might even do it in this podcast, mate. <laughs> you know, it's that's we'll, me. We'll subtitle it, mate. But... Yeah. I think, and I said this to Rob last night when we were talking about the podcast, because he spent some time with you fishing before. Yeah. He's come over to Holland come on, good with you. Too. Yeah. But I think as an angler out here, I know there's a lot of emphasis in the UK at the moment about coming over to Europe and sort of spreading your wings and having that freedom. You've done it for a long period of time. You've caught some incredible fish from everywhere. You don't scream and shout about it. But at the same time, I don't think necessarily, unless you know, people give you the credit for the angling you've done that you probably should have, mate. Because it's incredible. Some of the chapters you were talking about and you're going to talk about are unbelievable, mate. You were really genuinely, I think, in terms of size of carp, numbers of carp and the European scene, you've absolutely smashed it, mate. You've caught a few, haven't you? I've been doing it a long time, haven't I, mate? Yeah. <laughs> Got to do some of that in your life. Uh, I, I, love, I love me fishing now. I love me fishing. I always have done. And, You've uh, got that passion for it, and you can still see it now. Yeah, yeah. I still love it. Still love it. You know, I think I'll, I'll still be carrying on the rest of my life, I think, as long as I can, you know. It's, it's fantastic. How yeah. many years have you been over in Holland for now? Uh, I come in uh, 79th at first time. I work, I work in England. I, uh, I work in at Rolls Royce in Barn as a groundsman. Had a really good job uh, cutting uh, uh, lawns, uh, crown, crown, uh, crown ball in lawns. Yes. Got, I mean, to be dead straight. They had to be dead straight. Uh, <laughs> golf courses. I love the job. But they went on strike, and a mate of mine, he says, I'm, I'm going over to Holland. Uh, and I used to be a joiner. I, you know, I learned to join, trade as a joiner. And ended up coming over, and he says, do you fancy coming over? I said, oh, well, I'm on strike. I come over for a couple of weeks. I thought, I'll do a couple of weeks' work over here, because I think strike will be, it'll be like the uh, coal miner strike from years ago. I thought, oh, it's going to carry on for about six months, this strike. So I thought, well, I might as well go to Holland and earn some extra money instead of <laughs> stay, staying at home on the strike. Yeah. So I thought, it was a bit of an adventure, and I ended up coming over here. And uh, I just got over here. I think I worked maybe three days, and my uh, mother rung me up. She says, you got to go back to work on a Monday. I said, well, oh, when I got the taste for the beer over here and stuff like that, I like the old Heineken. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I did come over and I thought it was something new. I said, well, I'm jacking my job in. So well, you got to come back, you got to come back. I said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm coming back. And I stayed over here for about uh, nine months uh, wow. working. Then work run out and, uh, you know, I had to leave. But I, I met me uh, a, a girl over here and that was it. And... Uh, Ended up, <laughs> ended up uh, going back to England, and I worked down Wales, and I, and I worked two years. We had a, two, a relationship for two years, and I was working down Wales on oil refineries. 
Right. Uh, Little England, beyond Wales, they call it. It was in a place called Angle near Pembroke. Okay. It was a really small place, and it was just in a work camp. And I was there for two years. And she used to come over and say every holidays for three months. And she says, uh, did that for two years. And then after two years, she says, I've got a job in London. I'm coming to London. I can be near you. But this job in Wales was nearly finished. I had to go up to Scotland then. Oh. Uh, and I thought, well, if I've got to go up to Scotland, I said, well, I'm miles away from you. And I don't really fancy moving down London, you know, because I'm up from up north. Is, you know, I'd, I'd have been south of Manchester in my life before then. You're well, Lancashire, uh, ain't you, originally? Yeah, Lancashire, yeah. Uh, I've never been to south of Manchester. Yeah. So anything south of Manchester, they're all southerners to me. You know what I mean? That's how, that's how far up north, you know, we were. And uh ended up, uh says, well, I'm coming to London. I said, well, if you can get me a job over in Holland as a joiner, I'll come tomorrow. That was Sunday night, I rung up. They did have no more phones then. I put the phone down. And five minutes later, she rung back. She said, I've got a job for you. I've got a job for you. This is uh, you can start tomorrow. I thought, fucking hell. <laughs> I thought, oh, oh, oh. So I says, well, I'll come then, but it'll be next week. I didn't realise her father was a, a foreman of a big building company over in Holland, and he sorted me out straight away. Oh, touch. And that's uh, yeah, about 40, what, about 40, 48 years ago, something like that. Wow. So I've been over here since then. But and that's mad, isn't it? I love it. You know, I love it over here. I, ne- I could never go back. I love going back to England. I love seeing England. You know, yeah. I go back because uh, I'm an uh, area near Bengal. It's a lovely area mm. uh, where, where I lived in Cone. It's, it's, it's quite nice, but... To live there, I couldn't live there anymore. No, I'm I'm too Dutchified now. Too Dutch, isn't you? I, I'm a cloggy now, lad. I saw I'm you, I'm a mate. cloggy. Fluent Dutch yesterday in the old bar, mate, <laughs> talking to everyone. Yeah, mate, you are you are a Dutchman, but I think there's still a bit of Englishman at heart with some of the humour, mate, definitely. Oh, definitely. Got it. It's still there. you got to, you know, a day you don't laugh at it, you know. It's what's the point of living if you don't laugh. I love it, know? mate. And to be fair, the lifestyle you created and the angling that you do, obviously you do your guiding and we'll, we'll talk about that later, but what you've created within your life here moving over mm. is mega, mate. Like, it is your own path, which I love. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it yeah. is... Yeah, it's, you hear it all the time of people sort of saying, I would love to do this and I'd love to do that. And then there are certain people that go out there and, and sort of make it happen and do it, mate. And you've certainly done that. But before Holland, before that Dutch move, before meeting the missus and, and moving out here, you're angling, we said Lancaster in that way in Lancashire. Lancashire, Lancashire. It's not necessarily the old carp fishing no mecca no no UK, no I, I i started when i started fishing i started very very young i think about eight nine years old and, and that's when i got my first fishing rod and i got it i remember my father buying me it my father he bought me it uh at whitby on on the jetty whitby, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's when my first fishing rod. i think it was a tank aerial and with a little centre pin reel on it and and that rate, and we're fishing off the pier. And, and since then, you know, I've been, I've, I, just, I got the old bug, and you always start off, you know, and I start to catch him, uh, little codling and stuff like that. Uh, it, it was great. And then you progress, start to go in, uh, yeah, anything with teeth and the fins. Oh. And pike fishing, I love me pike fishing, even in England. Uh, start progressing. It grew a lot up the uh, Lake District, Grassmere, normally Grassmere. Wow. Did Windermere a few times, but Windermere, I found out Windermere, they were taking pike out because uh, there was a laboratorium there. They were seeing what's, you know, studying the, the pike, so they are netting the pike out of there. So I, I did a lot of fishing, uh, uh, Grassmere, s weight started there. Yes. And there was some big old pike at s weight but that would be, I used to fish them before they put trout in it. Oh, right, that before they put trout in before it. Before they put trout in it, yeah. So, you know, caught some, caught some good fish, you know, not, nothing massive. I think 15 pounds, something like that, were the biggest they had. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good it. bike, isn't it? Especially yeah. from somewhere like Grassmere or Wind. That's a big old sheet of water, do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. How did that then progress to sort of carp fishing? Because, again, pike fishing, sea fishing as a starting but, place and where you're based... There ain't a lot of carp. No, but in no, when, I, when I lived in the northwest of England, there were no carp. Yeah. Actually, no carp at all. And first time, uh, first carp I ever seen in my life was Sabden Lodge. Right. Of Sabden Lodge, my father took me there for a day, and I got on this lake, and it was full of these old blocks, match fishing. And in one corner, we were, uh, on the corner, there a bit of a, a lily beds. And I seen some fish swimming around, and I asked, what's them? And I seen these shads. They weren't massive fish, but I thought, 
what's that? And he says, the carp. This old bloke comes up to me, he says, the carp. So I'm going to try and catch one of them. He says, mate, you can't catch them. They're uncatchable. <laughs> oh, I'll try. So I spent all day casting in the weed, casting at any fish, trying to, <laughs> anything just to catch one. But I couldn't catch them. And I remember going back, uh, I spent about uh, five, I think in holiday time, school holidays, my father took me first time with his car. Yeah. It's about a 15 mile, uh, 16 mile cycling there. And the day after, I went on bush bike. And I went, I went back about four days, cycled there. And you know, it is up north. It's yeah. got hills, haven't we? Yeah, it's not flat. It's, it's not so. flat. So you, you're cycling up and down these hills just to get to this lake. And Sabden is on the edge of Bengal Hill. So it's, mm-hmm. it's quite steep. Especially when you're coming out of Sabden, because you've got to go to Cliveroe Way and come back on. It was, it was fair old, it was fair old cycling. But are you young then? You're not bothered, so I'm used to cycle. I never did catch one, to be honest. No. And then uh, Lake in Colne, the, uh, it used to be, they made it a bow grove. Okay. They made a little lake in it, and they stocked it with carp. And I started catching them there. But I, I, in that time, I was just starting on the match scene. I was going to say, yeah, did you do the old it, match scene? Well... I didn't have the patience to be honest. I've no, I've no patience. I did, I did fish a lot on Forage Reservoir, and right. I got an old boy who were learning me uh, uh, swing tipping. You know the old oh, swing yeah. tip. You know oh. the old swing tip. Yeah, swing tipping and uh, float fishing at distance. Uh, wag, was waggle the force, is it? Yeah, doing that. You know, and I got onto it, and I fished there, and I love that. But then he says, "Oh, this old boy." He says, oh, "Come, I'll do a bit of match fishing on canals and stuff like that. Get yourself signed in. You know, this prize to be won." You know, right? So I went with him a few times, but I mean, the four hours matches, and after two hours, I got bored and started casting everywhere and left and right. And we're getting a bit upset with me because uh, <laughs> so I thought it's the normal before end of match. I left the match, I left to swim. Did you? You know, yeah, because we're getting a bit upset. We stopped casting in all time, lad. <laughs> I was a young lad then, you know, and that was it. Mad, but I spent I spent loads of time up there, and I loved the up uh, ladies thing in Killington Reservoir. I loved it up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my uncle used to take me up there. All like mixed fisheries, isn't they? Mixed fisheries, yeah. They, they, but up Killington, it was normally pike and eels, and yeah. uh, now and again a trout. And then I used to do a bit of sea fishing. I've done a bit about everything really. I've done sea fishing. I used to go uh, with my father to Bridlington. Yeah, he's got the old boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the old cod and Fleetwood. God. And uh, we were the Fleetwood Angling Club. Uh, we went uh, up Scotland. Okay. Fishing from the rocks for congas. Yeah. Any good? Co- you catch a few? A lot of pollock. Spinning yeah. for pollock. We caught loads of pollock. Uh, I think once had a, a conga on and we were fishing on the rocks. And when it gets dark at night, you can't be moving around on the rocks. Yeah. So he had said, but I remember uh, in the morning, I got a run just before the first light. I got a run and I got a conga eel on. And uh, I had to pull it up a cliff. Cool. And uh, yeah, he just. Nah, it's not happening, going, it? it won't have it. It won't have it. He all the rods, so you know, that were it. Mate, it's it, like that, as I said, that region, but also the diversity of angling that you've done there. It's not like you stayed, you sort of travelled a bit, done a bit of sea, done a bit of mixed course. Done everything. Of pike, yeah. But it was it obviously in you from a from a very young very age. Very young, mate. yeah, yeah. I've Man. always loved it, loved it. First carp? Was it UK? You caught your first carp First carp, yeah. First carp, I caught it on Ball Grove. I think they stocked them in, so, you know, they were, they were climbing, up your, climbing up your rods then, you know what I mean? They put a few carp in, you know, catch. I was really, really proud of it. But, but, was it on bread or something? Eh? What did you have it on? Floating bread? Bread, yeah, bread. Classic. Yeah, yeah. Mad. And then yeah. that, that sort of carp fishing journey, was it, I'm guessing for you... It's. I mean, it's still a lot about everything. There's still pike in in your life. You still go and do a bit of this and a bit of that. But did your carp fishing as soon as you made that move to Holland? Did it then really sort of boom, or were oh, you already just is. all carp before you left? No, no, carp fishing. No, it's very in Northwest. It's hardly any carp fishing. Went to, uh, over to Yorkshire now and again for uh, tench fishing. Okay, the Castle Howard uh, Lake there in front of Castle. Howard. Beautiful lake. Caught a few tench there. Uh, never caught them. Really, you know, carp, carp fishing, never got I went in the scene for it, you know. It went, 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 I think. So only when I come over here, I started the carp fishing. Talk to me about that. So you come over here, it's obviously a change of sort of it's, life and whatever. What, what, how does? How do you then go, because there's a whole process of coming over to a new country, settling down, working, you've talked about that, but yeah. also sort of finding your feet around, like obviously your leisure time and whatever, and the differences between the UK and over here. Like I know it now coming over here. The, there's water everywhere. Lots there's, of water, yeah. <clears throat> and and uh, after ev- speaking to people, there's 
There's carp everywhere, mate. It's got, it, nearly every lake's got a carp in them, rivers and streams and stuff like that. It's full of carp in it. Just full of carp. It's like Pandora's box when you come over it. We're like uh, the cookie box for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I could come over, but when I come over, I was more interested in the pike fishing. Yeah. And I got over here, and I mean, we were catching pike in England. And you caught a 15 pound, it was a massive, massive pike. Yeah. And still, it's still a big pike, you know. Even today, it's still, I think it's still a big pike. Uh, I come, uh, come over and I've seen the pike fishing and the potential there. And nobody, everybody used to fish with little, uh, you see the pike dobbers, pike floats. Yes. And they fish a meter under it and they put a live bait on it and just swimming around. Nobody fish uh, float platinum system. Oh, so no anchored like, no yeah. No yeah. anchored and... I started doing that and fishing with dead baits. There's not, not many people were fishing dead baits back in the days. So you put a dead bait out and you put a, a floor platinum. Yeah, I was smashing it. I was, every, every year we're catching uh, 20 pounders, 20 pounders, 20 Decent. pounders. Yeah. I fished to about 30 odd pound, you know. <sighs> That's a big old That's, pike, even now. Yeah, it's a big pike. It's a big pike. I can't be 30 pounds, then that would it. Uh, I can't, it was a bit of a, a target of mine catching a 30 pound pike. And when I caught that, I thought, I'm going to have to have a go for these carp. So then start to fish for carp. But even back in the day, the carp were a lot smaller then. If you caught uh, three fish above 30 pounds, uh, no, above 20 pounds, sorry, yeah, in a year, you were, the king of, you were the king of the area. You were the top rod, you know what I mean? Because the fish were, you were catching doubles then, back in the day, double, double, figure, uh, double figure carp. Okay. Um, you so know, what year is this? Give me a year. Give me some context. When, when it was seventy nine, eighty one, eighty two, okay. some, something Early like that. 80. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fair few years ago. I can't remember the dates. It's so long ago. You know, I'm, I'm having to think all the time. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. No, fair you've done an awful lot. Yeah. So you were saying, so the again, twenty pounders, which again up north, you're not getting them where you were from. But no. twenty pounders, three of them in a year, mega year. Yeah. If you got three in a year, you know. But I mean, it would it, different then. There were there, there, there were no. There, no bivvies and no, there were no gear like that. It, 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 it was a begin stage. It, were, it weren't even boilies out then, were they? You know, I'm talking about right. the time before that. Was we were fishing with, uh, uh, yeah, paste, 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 paste. making his own paste, paste, kitty cat, breadcrumb, <laughs> and that were it. And then you put a bit of bread on a, on a size uh, uh, two null hook. Because there were no hooks, partridge hooks, big hooks, big right. sea hooks, you know. It's one that you ever caught. You put a golf ball, you cast it out, free line in it, and that was it. And uh, Was that what was that all derived from sort of an English method, or was that what you'd seen anglers using over here in terms of carp fishing? Well, they weren't, they weren't, to be honest, there weren't that many carp fishermen over here in the time. Oh, yeah. when, you know, I mean, there were a few knocking around with the camo gear on. There were a few about, but not many, not many. Not, not compared to nowadays. It were, it were all new. Everything was new, and then we started with, uh, with the old uh, the golf balls, just cast them in, free line them in, and then waiting. And you, you, you used to have your rods about a meter high, you used to have silver paper around it, silver paper around it. Yeah. And that was it, and you used to hit in twitches, weren't you? <laughs> eh? I don't Smack know, mate, I weren't born. <laughs> you weren't, you weren't <laughs> born then, but I mean, that, that was it, that was it. And you'd, I think you'd miss more with your card, and uh, that was it. And then we used to. Uh, Anchor uh, crust. Yes. Did that. But I mean, these lakes over, they're deep. I mean, you're fishing 10 metres deep. And you're fishing with an anchor crust from the bottom Jesus. to the top. And you just see a swirl. And normally, yeah, and you're fishing with, yeah, you, you can't comprehend all oh, the hooks and everything then. They were partridge hooks, they were big hooks. Mm. You could wear bare arse chain on them, they were that <laughs> blunt. You know what I mean? It, it was unbelievable. And that, you, it's one day ever caught a fish. When, and, when did it become if you like hair rigs and that sort of that, that development. And how did, how did you, how did you get access or information to all that? Cause obviously you're an English bloke. You, you used to get the magazines, uh, okay. the magazines back in the day, the magazines, you start reading things about it. And then you heard about the boilies and boilies. I thought, what is boilies? And I remember the, it was, I think it was Jeff Kempe brought a book out. Yes. Yeah. And there were ingredients in it and stuff like that. And a few ingredients I got off, it were sodium cassonate, calcium cassonate, it was all them bass. We used to, used to spend hours in my kitchen, <laughs> roll, rolling behind. Yeah. And they were like rubber. And it stick more to your fingers and you, behind your fingernails. That thing, you, you, you spent all evening yeah. making a little plastic bag of boilies. 
and that was it. And I remember, I remember the first time I met him and my mate, he was still using the old paste. Yeah. And we went fishing and he was catching and I weren't catching. And I've been making all these bullies and I'm saying, you know, I said, give some paste and, and it's near the end of the session. Oh, I need to catch a carp. And I'm using these, but I thought this is the in thing with the, with the, the new system, but it, it yeah. went work in the air. And uh, I actually went back to pace. I remember my baits, I think they were going a bit moldy. And I just, I didn't really realize at the time, it just threw me in the water. And I thought that's a bit of pre bait. And you didn't, you didn't know about the word pre baiting. No, nobody mentioned pre baiting. No. And but I thought with the moldy, I thought, well, I've spent hours making them. I'll throw them in the water. And I went back. It's a local lake uh, here, a gravel pit near here. And I went back the day after. And I thought, I had another batch, another batch. So I, I put one on, cast it out. And within two minutes, I had a run. And I thought, and I had about five or six fish. Did you? Yeah, about five, five or six fish. And my mate just saying he was using base bait. He said, have you got one of them, them oh, little balls? One of the little balls they got, them rubber things. They were, like, they were like rubber they were. They were like, you know, super balls. You remember the old super balls? No. You bang them on oh. the ground. Oh, the old bouncy it. ball. The yeah, bouncy yeah. ball, the old bouncy ball. You, you used to throw it on the ground. It bounced a meter. <laughs> <laughs> they were that like rubbery. You know, that, that, that was the days. Yeah. That's mad, and you, your your sort of significant captures when you first came over, you, you carp wise. Did you have a twenty pounder in your first year? Uh, first year, no. Second year, I did. Yeah, second yeah. year. I can remember. I even remember it today. I know exactly where I caught it. I know which time of year I caught. I caught it in uh, March, beginning of March, in a dyed up uh, lily bed. Yeah, I, I, I can I can remember. It. I was so proud. I was so proud. Of, you know, I jumped up and down it in March. Eh? Arch, yeah, yeah early, early doors. March, early doors. I can't. I'm really proud. I actually got somebody. I think I actually wrote my wife up to come and take photos. Did you? Yeah, take photos. We had a little one of these little throwaway camera things. Yeah, Let's disposable get, job. Go, go, go to the shop. Get a camera. Get a camera. Uh, you know, I can't. I, I, can't I can't. I can't. Twenty twenty pounder. Yeah, I, you know the weights. You know, even the thirty pound. My first thirty pound. I can't it. You know exactly when you can't it. Yeah, I, t- I tell you what, and also this blew my mind, Derek, mate. You talked about rolling your own baits in your kitchen, but yesterday when you said this, we were chatting in a hotel bar, as I said, but you, we were talking about various different fishing things. And then at the end, you were like, I still roll my own, I still roll my own baits, not hook baits. You still roll your own boilies yeah. now. Yeah. You I, buy the mainline base mix for yeah, sale yeah. and you roll it yeah. yourself. Yeah. Still do it. Still do it. What is that all about? It's it's, it's where you grow. I, I I always think fresh eggs. It's got to be fresh. The right. eggs, eggs got to come out of the chicken's ass the same day. I roll my baits. Really? Yeah, it's got to. It's got to. It's got to be fresh. I won't go to a supermarket. I've got a, a couple of farmers over here, chicken chicken, far, chicken farmers, and I get I get the uh, the eggs off them, but they roll the same day. It's got to be fresh. So you, but, and then also, and we're going to talk about bait later, but we, we, you, you roughly told me that throughout the course of a season, like 300 kilos is like a, a figure that comes around in terms of what you're using, depending on what happens when mm. you're fishing, whatever. So you will roll to this very day, you will roll in your own house and kitchen and boil over the course of a season, 300 kilos of bait. Yeah, yeah. still do. That's me- and you're not changing the recipe. You're not doing anything. No, no. Especially with, with the mix, the mainline mix I'm using. I'm using the cell, and all I do is uh, the activator with it, and that's it. I don't, I don't put anything in it. That's it. Just roll through. That did my head, mate. And that that is luckily cell is an easy bait to roll. It rolls easy. So you're literally make, making a mix out of a sausage and rolling them on rolling tables. Yeah. yeah no, but I've got I've got I've got a little. Uh, it's incredible, mate. Little machine. It, it, it comes the sausage out. I've got a mixer. It'll mix it for me. I'll do 30 eggs. It'll do 30 eggs at a time. I can mix 30 eggs. And I put into this, uh, was it a uh, mincemeat uh, grinder okay. in it? Yeah. It's got a little mortar on it, and then it'll come a sausage out. You don't put your fingers in, you'll chop your fingers off. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you shove in the old egg, and it comes sausage out. And then I'll, get, and then I'll get the old uh, rolling table out, and I'll start rolling. You know? Honestly, I'm not, this is not. Well, it is a bit weird, but last night, as I was going to sleep in my bed, I was just like, he rolls all his own baits. Like, fair enough, do your own hook baits because you want to pimp them up or put a bit of something in them. But you are rolling that from base mix, which is, I think this is absolutely mad. Mm. But, mate, as you say, it's where you come from. It's that whole process. Yeah. It's part of it, isn't yeah. it, for you? It's, they say I'm mad. Even Daryl and uh, Danny say I'm mad. So why do you use the ready-mades? But, I mean, if you've got confidence in a bait... What you do, you've been doing all your years. I ain't got the confidence in the, the ready-made. So I have a, it's in fresh raw bait. It's got to be fresh bait. 
And you're, oh, that mean, that does. How long does it take you to roll 100 kilos? A couple of days. God, it's quick, to be fair, isn't it? I think about 100 kilos rolled out over the floor and you told me, tell me to roll that myself. I'm, I'm, here, for, well, I'm here for the rest of my life. Well, it, it was something that, you know, you got to remember, when we, started, when we started fishing in the beginning, if you baited up with 40 baits, 40 boilies, that was a big baiting a big hit, yeah. campaign. That was a big baiting campaign. We, 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 we used to spend, me and my mates, he used to come here, a couple of mates, We'd, roll, we'd start rolling baits, and we'd all roll a little uh, sandwich bag full of baits. Yeah. And then 10 o'clock at night, the ships had stopped, the uh, profes- professional uh, shipping traffic, you stop. Yeah. You know a barge coming through. If you go at 8 o'clock at night and you put your bait in, the boat comes through, it'll wash your bait to the left and to the right. It won't be on the spot. Mm. If you go at 10 o'clock at night, you can... Uh, Bait accurately. Bait up, and it'll stay there while the morning, but the first boat comes through, it won't move it then. But I, actually, when I, now I realise, the boat won't move that far. It'll wash it maybe to the left and to the right, if the boat comes that way, it, left and right, it'll, it'll move it. Yeah. But uh, So you go there when there's no we go, we, 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 we spend all night rolling bait here, and then we 10 o'clock, we go to the canal, put his little 40 boilies in, and come back. And then do it three times in a week. And then on a Friday night, we all go fishing. We all have little, all have own little spots. And we all catch fish. It, yeah. You know, that's how we were fishing. It used to be like that. And now, in, nowadays, you hear people, they, they bait them with 50 kilos. I was going to say, yeah. You know, they're putting a lot of bait in. I've you know, never done that. I never, I never needed it all, I think. I'm, you know, I still catch my fish uh, my way. <laughs> you catch I use, I use, use a bit of bait now, a bit more bait. I, like you say, about 300 kilos uh a mix that'll be about 400 kilos, 420 kilos, burly, something like that in a year, something like that. Yeah, it's mate, it's just crazy that you roll it quantity wise for a normal English angler who's not been out here. That's that's probably a lot, but in realistic terms, to the venues you're fishing, some of the waters you're fishing, the nuisance fish involved, that's actually not a lot. Of bait. That is nothing, that is no. nothing. No, I definitely know of lads who've put well, probably near that out in one hit, do you know what I mean, and fished over it. So that's fair play. The the fishing over here, Holland, you reference sort of the venues, the locality, catching a 20-pounder, lakes. Here, there are canals, rivers, lakes, the lot, mate. There is absolutely yeah. everything. And as you drive through Europe, through sort of Belgium, obviously the canal system's pretty well known out there. France, public lakes. How did you... Did you tackle things locally? Did you did you target lakes? What did you? How did you organise that angling when you came over here? Because obviously there's an abundance of water. Yeah. There's there's sort of a, a development in carp fishing where you're now you've got boilies, technology is going to move on. You've got mm. hair rigs, etc., coming into play. But actually, you and your angling, how, how, where did you decide to go and, and sort of why? Well, we used to we used to started like say start night fishing on canals. Uh, that's when I started night fishing. We used to fish locally just in daytime mm. and then coming home at night and go back in the morning again. Uh, and then, so, well, I liked on the bank. You take a few beers, enjoy yourself, a couple of mates, catch a few fish, but then it's just getting, getting more into it, more into it. And then uh, you, buy, you buy yourself a little uh, what were it, uh, umbrella with an overwrap. Mm. And that were it. And I remember the old first stretches I had, it was just a... Uh, a sun, sun lounger, just a sun lounger. I mean, you sleep on a sun lounger and sleeping bags. Um, they, 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 they weren't the gear then. They were no gear. They were not. They weren't even the fox because the first fox uh, stretch come out. I remember buying one of them first one. A canvas, a canvas thing. And I remember buying it, and he engraved it, my name and everything on it in the shop. <laughs> Derek Harrison. And I was so proud of this stretcher. It was just just a canvas, it was, but it had adjustable legs on it. Right. Because the old sun lounger we had. We we were like MacGyvers, weren't we? we yeah. We, we used to put fold them, out jobs. Just folding out, but we put little legs on them and we drilled holes in, so we could move it. If we were on the on level bank, we could level them up a bit. But I mean, you used to lay in them and then they fly up in the air and uh, you fall out of them. And then they come the old Kevin. I think it was Fox. Uh, I think Kevin Maddox brought it out for Fox uh, a bed chair. Yeah. Useful legs. Oh, I was so proud of that. I got that <laughs> with your name on it. With my name on it. And they, were, they, were, they, were not, they were not sleeping bags then. I mean, we, I, I started fishing later in the year because everybody used to stop fishing. I caught my 30-pound bike. So yeah. the, 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 the motivation to keep carrying for bike fishing, I'm not, I was happy when we were catching. I'm fishing now and again. 
but I preferred uh, I preferred oh, sorry. I preferred uh, sort of enjoying my carp fishing a bit more so I was doing a bit more winter fishing yeah I remember it I remember because we used to uh, army dump went to army dump bought myself a sleeping bag and it was one of them tank things and you used to there was a zip in front you could take it off and you could get your legs out you could run 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 your sleeping bag and that was it but and we're fishing there in winter, and they were not. They were, we had no eaters or anything like that. Yeah, savage. Oh, oh, we had a little kangle in in a jam jar. You used to put under your, under your stretcher. I I think the 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 umbrella ceiling it'd be black in the morning. You'd be black. Would you? Aye. Just to try and keep warm. Just to keep warm. This little lamp, but you'd wake up in the middle of the night. Your feet would be freezing, so you'd be running around this with sleeping bag. You'd roll it up. And you'd be running around trying to warm your feet up a bit. Joking. You joking. Went back to bed, yeah. And yeah, nutters. Were there a lot of locals doing that as well, or not? No, not many people. No, not just in the day. Just a mad English yeah. man. Just, yeah, me and a couple of mates, you know, we're, we're daft, we're daft, we're doing it, you know. And what was it like with, with I'm not, not going to say acceptance, but sort of coming in and, and you need a network of people in terms of information and everything, because obviously there's not a lot about, but there's obviously other anglers that you network, spoke to your mates. Network information. You have to find it out yourself, mate. Did you? Just go. Just go. Find it. Find it. Just find the water. Go fish it. So what do you do then? Just just go. Just go. That's good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we'll, we'll try it. We'll try it. Fishing club. You know, you fish your local waters first and you get the ear with fish what's getting caught, stuff like that. And right, yeah, yeah. You know, so you're, you are hearing a fish being caught. Well, it was quite secretive back in the day, wasn't it? Nobody, nobody talked to one another uh, thing, but everybody respected one another, though, to, to be honest. If they knew you were baiting a spot up, I mean, we 40 boilies, people leave, they'd leave it alone, they'd drive past the swim because it's all oh, Derek's been baiting there. That's his area. Right. And that's sad now because there's no respect no more. There used to be respect. You said it's pretty savage now, isn't it, mate? It is. It's dog eat dog now, you know. It's just, it, it, it's just catchy fish, you know. The, 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 <laughs> That dog eat dog is that dog eat dog with UK anglers coming over, or is that dog eat dog within actual Dutch anglers as well? We in Dutch anglers as well, to be honest. Right. Uh, you know, there's not a you know. I mean, I've, like I say, we're fishing a lake this year, and I, I was I was smashing it, and I was fishing on the lump, mm. and the blow come on, and he just rolls right across me, or past the lump, just to drop it, and I says, so, so "I'm fishing there, mate." And yeah, just I says, didn't care. Eh? I didn't care. Says yeah. He said, I'm fishing there now. He weren't even fishing on the spot where I was fishing. He was fishing past me. So he just cut you off completely? He just cut me off completely. And, you know, I mean, them days. I'm, 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 I'm old and wise enough now. I just don't bother. I just, I've had, I've had, the dog's got his bone. I'm, I'm on my way. But there were, there were a couple more bones I could have plucked there. But, mm, uh, you had a good bone, mate. We, we won't talk about that out of respect, mate. We'll keep it quiet because I'm sure you go back and collect the others. Well, um, yeah, yeah. The um the, the the fishing from there. So you're you're sort of local fishing. You sort of prospecting. You're going off little bits of information. The actual the actual sort of development in your angling is was it a case of just I don't know natural instinct. The fishing you'd done in England coming into sort of good looking at certain areas, or was it a case of really struggling to start with and then having to build? Did you catch from the off pretty much? Small fish, small fish. Like I say, we got uh, three twins in a year. You know, you you you're the king. You know, you were the king of the area, honest to God. And then you just got guys in, the fish just get bigger and bigger, and you start travelling a bit further. I mean, there's no fish around here to, to keep me going the rest of my life. You know, even this small area I live here, it's full of lakes where I live in it. You've seen it yourself. Oh, yeah. It's all woods and lakes, isn't it? Yeah. And they've all got carp in. I mean, there's some lakes here. I could take a couple of lakes here. I don't think they've ever been fished for carp. Derek, the, let's, let's not blow them on the old podcast, eh? mate. Let's keep them between us, mate. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think they'd be big fish, but I mean, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be fishing them, they'd be fishing them, you know, there's still, still what's what, uh, I'm been too sure. How long did you stay local before you started sort of traveling further and where did you go? Uh, getting these magazines, you start reading bits and you get little snippets, information, this and that, you I remember this English boat going down south of France, I thought, it's a long way down is that, so that was Cassine. Jeez. So, and I think that were in, what year was that? 85? The best year that, mate. That's when I was born, boy. 85, that's a good year. Good year. Good year for the wine, lad. It was a good year. <laughs> it was a good year for the line. Now, I think it was 85, first time we went down. Uh, to to Cassian? Yeah, I went there as a family holiday. Uh, I'd heard snippets. I remember taking a, a few trays, them Rodgers and Boilies. Uh, Rodgers and yeah, these little plastic trays, crystallised Boilies they were. Crystallized. Crystallized. They were like, they were, they were hard as hell they were. 
You dra- if, you, if you threw one on the ground, it fucking it make an all in it. <laughs> it make an all in it. It was that hard. It was that hard. They were crystallized. They were crystallized. They were all crystallized. But it's little trays. I think half a kilo in a tray. Right. You were selling at Brown's Box near a fishing tackle shop. I remember taking about five of them with me. I thought, that'll keep me going. Yeah. Two weeks holiday with wife. Went for wife. Stayed in the caravan. I was fishing in daytime. A couple of hours in the morning. Going back to the campsite. Spending it with wife in the afternoon. Yeah. In the evening going back for a couple of hours. And, uh, yeah, week. We spent a week there. Blanked. Did you? I went blank. I thought, wow. I couldn't get off my mind. So I thought, a year after, I'm going back. So 86, I went back again. I thought, I'll get prepared this time. So instead of about six, I had about 10 trays of them boilies. Here we go. <laughs> so 10, 10 trays, I had about five kilos of boilies. <laughs> yeah. Went down, yeah. went down to the old escort. There were no, there were no clothes around. It wasn't my fishing gear then, wasn't it? I, I, I thought I'm getting there with little bits of gear. I took some mix down with me, that uh, my rubber mix. Oh, I yeah, they'll cassinate, they'll cassinate. I'll cassinate. Trying to roll it in, on the campsite, 35 degrees. Oh. <laughs> it, it, it were bad, it were bad. <laughs> and I started the fishing. I started the fishing at West Ham. As you drive down towards the bridge, there were a car park at top, and I was steep hill down to water's edge. And the, to the right of me, there was a little weed bed. I started, to, I thought, I'll, start, I'll bait this heavy. I might have put 50 bullies in. Ooh. That, was, that was back in the day, 50. But I thought, ooh, I've got to walk back up that hill. I thought, I might, over, I might put overfed them here. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, got back up, day after, morning after, shot back down, straight in, fished, caught one, 16 pounder. I were over the moon. Oh, go on, 16 boy. pound, you know. 86, 16, 16 pounder. Yeah. I were over the moon. I were over the moon. Oh, yeah. Mate, that's I think I, I think I sacked it, drove back to the campsite, got the wife. She got me a little portable, a little throwaway camera, took in a little photo, and uh, I was going back up hill. And I remember going up this hill, and I seen a coach stop. And I looked, and there's a load of blokes in it. And a load of... English blocks in it, and it Regent Tours. Is it Regent co- Coaches? I think they were doing, started doing coach trips down there. What, from from England? From England. Jeez. They were just full of all these English. Oh, God. They were all fishing gear. No. And best of all, it looked all like, I thought, well, are they all going match fishing? But they all had carp gear. They, they, but, I mean, they were more advanced than what I had. They had a lot better gear than what I had. Uh. I'm looking, I'm like, you know, what's this for? And I thought, oh. And got and drove off, didn't think no more about it. But I realised later, they were, they were, every day they were fishing in daytime and then they were picking them up a coach at night and taking them back to an hotel and then oh. and bringing them back. And I think when they come, I think it was one of the first trips, it must be one of the first trips. Because I, wa- I come back in the evening, I went back to my swim, because I just had my 16 pound, I over at moon, I walked down the steep bank and there were two, uh, two English to oh. swim. English, even back then, mate. Even back Ruin then. Even, they were straight into me straight away. So, but, I mean, I think they didn't know about it, you know. Yeah. They, just, they just seen a spot and they fished. What, I'm guessing it, the, the banks were pretty scarce of, of, of British anglers at that point, apart from this trip, obviously. Very rare. Very, very, now and again, a few snippets. I think Phil Smith, I think he was there Hi. in 86. I think he was fishing then. When did Kev Ellis uh, catch his... That I think was that later. Were, that were later. I think it was later. Seven, eight, 88, 89? Yeah. Something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, eight, eight, exactly eight, seven, 88, something like that. And then there was the then, boom. Then got the boom, and that, that was it then. For me, it finished. You don't like that, do you? You don't like... No, the... I don't like it fishing in the crowd. I, I, you know, I, like me, I like me space. But even... I reckon even if you were offered a pay lake with big carp in it, like that had been done, so to speak, people had angled it, you knew, you're not really about that, are you? No, no. I mean, you've got the Black Mirror here in Holland. Uh, the Black Mirror in Holland, uh, you know. I don't really, I've known about about 12 years that fish. I went, I, I'd looked at it a couple of times, people fishing it. Uh, I thought, no, it's not my thing. I don't want to sit in the, in the crowd. How big is that Black Mirror now, though? It's massive, isn't it? It's, the rent is about 40 kilos now. Jeez. Still swimming around. It's a lovely fish, to be honest. It's a lovely fish, but uh, it's, it's not my thing. You know, I prefer to catch fish with no names. I love that about you, Derek, as well, because there is no. the option to. I can't, if, to if, do if, it. If, I'm not being big at it, but I think if I wanted to, wanted to go for that fish, I put the effort in. I, I, I think I catch it. It's, it likes his bait, does that fish? So, you know, mm, and I think and if, it, I, if you spend the time after it, but it's it's not it's not my it's not my thing. It's not your bag, is it? It's not. No, if it's sitting in the crowd, no. <laughs> Cassian, you've obviously been to Cassian. Talk yeah. to me about other chapters. Well, I ended up, did, do you want to carry on when I went back to it? Yeah, yeah. Or do, do you want to carry on? 
I went back. I went back in 2000. Oh, you did go back? Oh, yeah. I thought you left it alone. I left it alone, but I left it alone for a lot of time. And the reason I went back, uh, I, I was invited to be a French guy to fish on River Lot. Yes. And I fished it a couple of times, River Lot. I liked it down there and uh, I enjoyed it. And I'm going down end of October and we took a week off work, sorted my bait out and everything. Really looking forward. Two days before uh, I was leaving, rung me up. I can't go. It's French, I'm a French guy. So I was, I was a bit gutted. Yeah. And normally I'd have gone by myself because I've, I've later I've fished a lot there by myself. But uh, have you? yeah, I fished a lot there, not, not a lot. But in October, it was beginning. I thought, well, river, I know there was a lot of rain down there at that time. I thought the river would be flooded and you could need a boat. And I thought, I don't fancy it by myself. So I thought, well, I'll prepare. I'm going to go to a lake in uh, north of France mm. for the week instead. A bit easier fishing. I can do it by myself. No, yeah. no problems whatsoever. But a mate of mine, a Belgian friend of mine, he was fishing down there and he rung me up. He said, oh, I said, we've had a couple. And I said, oh, I said, it'll be busy though, won't it? He said, no, no, no. He says, you swim across. We're fishing in right in top of North, North Arm, he's saying. He says, it's quite quiet up this end. I said, well, I said, I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to come. So he said, if you come, he says, ring us up. Yes. And I'll pick you up and I'll help you with your gear. Park at Chess Pierre's, let us know when you come, and we'll go from there. I thought, right. I said, that wife, come on. I said, I'm not going to North France. I said, I'm going down to, back down there. Yeah. And she says, oh, it's just, it's just a fair old drive. I think it's 1,200 kilometres, 1,300 kilometres, something like that from here. What's that from here? Four, five hours? Five more? No, nah, it's uh, normally it's about twelve hour trip. Oh God, I've understood twelve hour trip. So I thought, well, I'll leave at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I, and I, it just there was no traffic, so I got down there earlier than I expected. I, I, I expected to get down there evening, so I, I'll ring you up at evening when I get there. I'll ring you up when I get there. But is it no farm? We had no uh, telephone charges Signal, and stuff yeah, like okay. that. So you used to turn your mobile phone off in, in daytime. Just turn it on for an hour a day, just so you keep your battery life going. Yeah, and he turned me made to turn his telephone. So I got there after I got there the afternoon. I'm trying to ring him up. Yeah. He didn't answer it. So I had a little walk around br- the bridge, swimming everywhere. They were, they were quite busy, and mm-hmm. everybody was seem to be blanking. And uh, ended up going back to Shakespeare. I've rung him about twenty times. He won't answer his phone. Won't answer his phone. So I thought, well, I better go have a brew there. I had a coffee. Yes, I had another coffee and another coffee and another coffee. I think he went the coffee at ended, yes, <laughs> I was waiting that long. Then finally I got a, the, the call. Yeah. Oh, you're here, you're here. So he says, well, he come down, he had a big boat with him. He come down from North Farm, right at top end. He come down. So we got back to his swim. We were fishing with him. I said, well, I don't want to fish next yeah. year. He says, I'll fish across from you. And there's a, a swim called the Table Swim. Right. So I went in there. So I got me here in there. But I've been up since about three o'clock in the morning driving. The time we were there, we got there just in dark, mm. got my tent up, and I thought, I won't fish tonight. And my sister says to the lad, I says, Are you going back to his swim? I says, Here's five kilo of bait. I'll start the baiting up more then, didn't I? Here's five kilo of the big fish mix. Get on, just put it on that point there for me. Didn't even, didn't roll the depth for anything. Just, just put, put five kilo out, put that little bucket out there for me, mate. So, and I thought, I get my head down. Yeah. It started to rain at night. I woke up in the morning, pissing it down. I thought, I'm down in south of France. I've come for an holiday. I thought, I'll get a bit of sun, at least a bit of sun and a bit of sun down. And it's pissing it down. So I'm a bit disappointed about that. I thought, well, I better get my rods out. So I cast rod out where I thought it were and just carried on deeper and deeper and deeper. Just oh. dropping, dropping. It, I think it was 45, 45 <laughs> feet deep it were. <laughs> Jesus. Eh? But I heard fish Crashing in the night. Oh, did you? Yeah, even, even though I, I was knackered, we were driving down. I, I don't know any sleep. And time I got set up and everything, 11 o'clock at night, I just crashed out. And I cast out, and it just led to get going down and down and down. And I thought, what's this? What's this? And I, when I did go out in the boat later, I found out what the everywhere. It was 45 foot. Jeez. I dropped it, and I thought, that's it. And I thought, ooh, ooh. I didn't even pump my boat, pump my boat up again. No. I thought I'd get my rods out because it was raining. I thought I'll get my rods out. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do it because I'll get back in my tent and I'll, I'll get a couple of hours skip because I'm I'll, I'll, I'll still knackered at work, to be honest. <laughs> so I'll get my rods out, put my other rod out, put me free. I only have three rods, fishing three rods, put me three rods out. I thought, that's it. Got back into the tent. Half an hour later, the rod, the first rod I put out, 45 minutes away, put the bait on it. 
screamed off. In 45 foot or whatever 45 foot. So I'm playing the fish. I've got a boat where he's even been pumped up on oh, the bank, no. on the ledge. I think, what the hell is this? What the hell is this? <laughs> I'm screaming and we're trying to whistle to be made the other side. Yeah. We were fishing, we were fishing the other side of the North Farm. Yeah. He couldn't really no. hear me. But wonder ball wonder landed it, a 48 pounder. No. I thought, oh, I've cracked it. I've cracked it. Yeah, that's mega. It was a 48 pounder. We are now we're landing. And I was talking to people on the on the bridge swim. Yeah. They've been, been there two weeks. They hadn't even had a run. They hadn't even seen a carp. But I, I, and he says, this was, you're blank this way. I said, no, I'm going to catch. And I just had that feeling. You get that now and again, you get that feeling you, you're, you're, you're on the money. And I, and I thought, I'm on the money. And I, and in the daytime, the more. So I pumped my boat up, yeah. got out, and I looked. <laughs> it was just straight down, 45. And the little ledge, I won the ball with. I must have cast into that on, on the ledge. Because ledge, yeah. it still went deeper. I Did think it, it went down 60 odd, uh, 60 odd feet. It was still going. It's deep down. It's deep in that north farm. Jeez. But I got on a little ledge I did. But it was, still, it was raining. Got my boat pumped up. Got this photo. Got this for 48 pounds. So my trip with Medford Week. Done, you know, yeah, I, I was done. doing that. I mean, like, that's it. I have some bathe. I never catch anything else. It's just a bonus. Wow. And uh, I think I'd, then I, I did go heavy then. I had, I had 60 kilos of uh, big fish mix with me. This is when you were Nutribates, yeah? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. At 60 kilos, I rolled 60 kilos of bait. I thought, I'm, I'm going to swim. That, that was for me, for me uh, lot trip. So I, I thought, I'm taking all lot in, car we're in. Yeah. No food. I just told that it would bait. You know? <laughs> no food, mate. <laughs> couple of cans of beer and a yeah, couple, of, <laughs> couple of crackers and that were it. And that was, that, was, that was my supply for the week. You know, I used to, be, I used to be slim, I did, in the old days. You're still in good nick. Uh, oh, mate, you are. We wait on now, though. But it's, it, it was good. It was good. It was good days. And, Caught this fish, so I got my boat out. I was looking round. It was deep everywhere, to be honest. Yeah, what am I doing here? So, uh, put another five kilos out on that spot. I think uh, that night I caught another fish, uh, thirty pounds something like that. That'll do, mate. Do me. I still be, but the fish were coming through, it came crashing out every night. I, I, I think what I were, the fish were moving. Yeah, round the point. And on the point, I was dropping into that ledge. I realised that ledge, and I, I started putting it on there. And I was catching fish every night on that spot. Oh, yeah. yeah what, two, the rest of the lake were blanking? Uh, mate had it on the other bank. There were two of them, two of them mates. I think they were fishing first. I think they had a couple of fish in two weeks' time. Wow. You know, and he, he was saying, oh, we're smashing, we're smashing. When I got there, to be honest, they only had two fish. Yeah. Uh, to be left up against the dam, where the dam is. Yeah. There were a couple of Belgian guys fishing up there. There was a couple of other girls. They come to me every day, that Belgian guy. Have you caught any fish? Asking. And I'm honest bloke. If anybody asks me, you know, I say, yeah, of course I've caught this and I've caught that, I've caught that. Oh, oh. we catch nothing. But I thought it was strange because after my first night, second night, I was looking and I seen the boat going out in the dark. Did I thought, you? They're not going out no. in the dark. So we were, they were catching fish, but he, he tried to keep it quiet, he were. Yeah. A bit uh, sneaky, Secret squirrel. Sneaky sod, he were. The old Belgium. You know, an old Belgium guy. I <laughs> actually met him later, you know. I've met him a few times since then. You're good like that, and you've got a good network of like lads that you meet, you, you lot and characters that you stay in touch with, don't you, mate? Yeah, right? yeah. No, normally, uh, we keep, keep in yeah. touch, you know. You keep in touch with a few people. I'm not, I'm not on the internet. I'm not on the internet and WhatsApp and everybody, you know. I've, I've got... A, to be honest, in life, you you haven't got many friends in your life. Yeah, I mean, you can, I can count them on hand. What I, friends I've got in my life on yeah. one hand. Yeah, proper friends, proper friends. You got a lot of mates. Yeah, of course, proper friends. You know, that, it's, but proper, uh, friends, but yeah. proper friends is you, you see who your friends are, and you know, over the years. But. So obviously, Cassian, France, any any other sort of no, but I'm I'm, I'm still fishing there, and oh yeah, I haven't finished yet. You know, but I found my spot, so I put all my three rods on that spot. On that ledge. On the ledge, yeah, uh, 40, where you 45 uh, feet deep. It's deep. <laughs> you know, deep. <laughs> it's deep. I put three rods on it. And one night it shot off, uh, I think it was about 11 o'clock at night. And it was thunderstorm. Oh. And it was rough. I could see I could see lightning. Mm. And I'm, I'm a bit used. I'm in my little rubber boat. Mm. I'm out in my little rubber boat. Because I really had my boat bumped up. So all I was doing, because I lost a couple of fish as well on the rocks. Well, cut off. Cut off. So I realised, get a run, don't hit it, just jump in the boat, get out to the fish, then play. you don't have to, because they hook themselves anyway. Yeah. So you've hooked them, just get out and wind down to them and then play them from there. And he used to tow you around. 
So what this this fish, I get this fish on, and he ate it. He's towing me around this lake, and this thunderstorm's getting near and near. It's cracking over my head. And I thought, I've got to get this fish. And I had bullied it, and I'm bullying it, and I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it up. And you're talking about forty five meters, yeah. uh, forty five feet uh, deep. It's really going for it, and. Uh, Finally, we're getting closer and closer, and I really started bullying it, bullying it, bullying it. And just one thing, pff, big mirror popped up. Oh. It was just, I think it was just short of 60 pounds. Oh, my God. It was one of the most iconic fish from the lake at the time. It was uh, half, half moon scale. Oh, my God. 59 pounds. So I was I blown away. But it took me miles off the bank. Yeah, dragged because you Because it, it dragged me out of the wind and, and the thunder. So I, I had a clue where I am, so I'm... Got this nearly sixty pounds in, in my boat, in my little boat between my legs. Yeah, and I'm trying to roll back, roll back, know. roll back to the bank, and I finally found the, the spot, and I come back, and I got, I got it, got up the bank, and oh, put it on the scales, and I, I think I had scales to fifty pound, gone, and just bottomed them. So I'm trying to ring my mate up. He turned his telephone off. Oh, it's thunder and lightning. It started to rain again. And it really didn't, it didn't off, it started to rain that night. It didn't half come down, a lot of rain. And uh, I thought, uh, finally, you know, I rode across to it. I thought, I've, I've, I've got any scales, mate. Have you got any scales? Did you row across, yeah. So I, I got the scales and I rode back and uh, weighed it. And he put his telephone on. I said, how oh, big, how oh, big? I says, 59 in the base. Just shot to 60 pounds. Just shot 60 pounds. And come round it morning, it was early morning, and uh, so I said, I sack it, and it was towards it morning, so I'm not taking it towards that, he didn't come across the lake in the storm. Right, yeah. So, so sacked it in, in in the edges, luckily we're okay. Yeah. And then come round it morning, uh, took it out, and we seen his scale, it has a scale on its shoulder. Yeah, That's yeah. Why it's called half moon scale, and that was the fish, it was an iconic fish, one of the most uh, people want to catch the fish. Jeez, mate. And it was the same, it was about that time, I had another mix, uh, the trigger just come out. Oh, yeah, trigger. I just started the trigger, and he, I had a, s- a sample of him, and he gave me a sample, and I think I had about 10 kilos. I run out of my bait, I run out of my big fish mix. But they all big fish mix. Our fish coming through back, you can't hold them. No. I went through my 60 kilos, I think, in, that's the first time, that's one of the most bait up time I've ever done in my life. Yeah. I think 60 kilos in four days I've run out. You've burnt through it, yeah. Run out through it and had, I think I had about uh, 10 kilos that trigger. It was a new mix. So I put that out and I, and I actually did catch a, I caught a 40 on that as well. Wow. So I had a really a good trip, session. Mate. Yeah. But with this rain, it started raining. The, 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 the water level rose so much. It was unbelievable. You've seen it how, how it rises. I'm saying you won't believe it. When it starts torrential rain, it starts coming down the mountains. That, you just see it moving, moving, moving. Oh, scary. And one of my last nights, I was getting a lot of line uh, bites. Yeah. And I didn't realize the fish, the fish, where I were actually on my rod, I had to keep moving it up, moving up. But on the uh, table swim, you're quite high, uh, quite high up. Okay. But when I started, it would lower down. But when I left, the water come up where I were fishing, that was underwater now. But they were getting lines with me, and the fish were, I didn't realise at the time, but the fish were coming. Right up. But where, where it would have been dry. Yeah. They were, they, I think they were looking for base, a lot of rocks, but I mean, there must have been a bit of food in between them. Mm. And uh, two Belgian guys what, were fishing near the dam wall, packed up. I, I seen him, even when he left, I said, I didn't look, no, I haven't caught anything. <laughs> I haven't caught anything, but I thought, no, you've had a, you've had a few fish. So my mates across the far bank, I says. Hey, they're they're leaving. I seen him packing up. They're leaving. I seen him going out in boat. So they got the gear. They put the gear in there. But where they were fishing is a, a, a level, right? Where it's a bit flat, and that had gone on the water. But where they were fishing, it had gone on the water. So they'd moved up into rocks. I said, and I says to me, mate, I says, if you put a rod on there, I think you'll have a fish. I'm getting a lot of line swimmers. And before I when I left, they had a couple of days to go. Yeah, and he smashed it because all the fish come come up really shallow. Yeah, on and that they were, flat they were fishing bit. on that flat bit. They were they were fishing on the ledge, weren't they? A ledge, it were quite a big ledge as well. They were fishing on that, and he, I think he had about four or five forties. Uh, he did before he left. Because before I was driving home, and he rolled me up. He says, I, before I even got to Leon, he's after a forty. He said, wow. I'm in daytime for 
I should have stayed a few should days longer. Uh, yeah, exactly. Should have stayed a few days, but I mean, I were happy. I mean, I caught me fishing. That were Incredible, it. mate, that session. That were, that were a good session. It was really good, you know. 2,000. Wow. The, the, the How were you were catching them? Bait-wise, we talked there, you you were trigger at the time of using that. Were you, were you fishing sort of simple hair rigs on the deck, or did you fish big old baits? What, what, what How were you fishing it? No, I just I was just fishing uh, 80, mil, 80 millimetres uh, boilies, uh, snowman, uh, double baits. Normally double bass out with it. What it's are you, simple. What are you like now with that? Are you are you rig are you rig I don't see you as a riggy type. Nah, player. keep it simple, lad. Keep it yeah. simple. There's one thing in life. It's yeah. What what, what can I say? What, there's no wonder rig. There's no wonder bait. Do you know what wonder thing is in life? It's time and effort. Yeah? That is it. That's a that's that's a magic ingredient. Everybody talks about the new fine angle super rigs. Keep it just simple. I mean, I'm, I'm using rigs I've been using for the last 20 years. I'm multi rig, and that's one of my favorite pop up rigs. Okay. Fanta- so multi. Fanta- fast hit rig, uh, multi rig, and just, just a normal uh, bottom rig, snowman rig. Just a normal, what, hair just, rig or blowback? Just air rig, you? air rig, blowbacks. You know, just, just simple, just, just a normal air rig. It's where you put it. It's where you put it, sharp hooks. That's, that's you sharpen them, do you? Or not? Well, Kamakura, they do them, don't they? Because I mean, I remember... The, well, you got those, yeah. Da, da, Dan, Danny comes, Danny, every year he has a fishing trip with me. Yeah. And Danny always brings something new with him, doesn't he? I'm, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, oh, well, I see things. Yeah. I, I remember he, he had a trip with me one time, and I remember he had a batch of Kamakura hooks a few years, it's a few years ago now, because they do record it, they do test everything before they put it on the market. Yeah, of course. And uh, he had these hooks with him, and I says, and I, I had this fish, and I thought, I said, hey, that hook, I said, hey, I've got any of them, because I don't really ask for anything, but mm. if I see someone I want, you know, yeah, I, I want it. And I said, have you got any? And they give me a packet, and they were the Kamakuras, and they were a, 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 a batch you were, so I'm trying them. And this lake I was fishing, you know, they, they were really, really sharp. I thought, this is something, this is something different. Yeah. So, uh so there's little like, edges you like then, isn't there? Oh, I had these little things. So I had, I had them and I would look at Damien. He saw to me, I, I says, that's when Danny left because he gave me te- a packet and I think there were 10 in the packet in there. You catch a couple of fish and he, that's it, they've gone. You know, yeah. every time every fish you got to get, and you can see a few bream in the lake. So I went through them straight away. Yeah. I says, Danny, have you got any more? I said, I ain't got any more now. I said, but he says, ring up. So I rung Damien up. I said, Damien, I said, I'm, anything I need. I said, no, I says, and I want them hooks, I want them hooks. So he used to send me them over. So I was fishing a couple of years before they come on the market, the old Kamakuras. But if you didn't have access to them, would you sharpen your own? Did you get into a stage of that or not? Uh, yeah. 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 Daryl got me into it. You know, Daryl's, he's, he's a man with sharpened hooks. He's he's uh, obsessed with sharpened hooks. Yeah. I, that's one thing I love the bloke to bits. But one thing I can't, if I've got a rig in his hand, I don't want to touch his rigs because I don't want to go near his hooks. You said to me last night, if you want to mess with him, touch his hooks. Touch That's his hooks. You said. Touch his hooks. Don't go near his hooks. The look, look alone will kill you. Really? You know? now, one no, time we were, we were fishing, in the, I was just in, in uh, we were fishing on the uh, Orient and uh, put a rig in a bucket. Uh, give me the old rig. I'll put it in. I'll put the rig in the bucket when we get in the boat. Yeah. Keeps it safe. Yeah. And I think the hook just touch the side of the bucket <sighs> and the looks. Honest, I, put, eh? yeah. I, I nearly jumped out of the dinghy. Uh, so we come back, so back to the main boat. I thought, ooh, 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 because eh? that, that's that's. Wow, mate! I can't argue with him. He's caught more carp than I've had at dinners. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So fair and play. He, he got me into oak sharpening, you know. And, uh, did he? I just, and uh, I, do, I do do me all now and again. But if I can get away with kamakuras, I use kamakuras. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I think like there's little nuances of sort of UK fishing that 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 you've obviously got because you've got a good network, you spent time with, you talked about Danny, Daryl, the likes of, but then you like the perceptions of like fishing, fishing over here is that like a lot of European anglers, it's quite heavy baiting, relatively agricultural and those sort of finer points aren't needed because they ain't that pressured. Do you know what I mean? You find them and you catch them. No, don't kid yourself. They don't crawl up your, exactly. they, don't, they don't crawl up your rod, do they? Exactly what I was going to say. But realistically, it's still just as hard, I'd imagine, because it is carp fishing. Carp fishing is carp fishing. A carp is a carp. There's, there's, yeah. Every carp's, carp's, got, carp's got to eat, so he's got to catch. He can't got any hands. He can't pick it up. He's got to pick it in his mouth. Mm. If you've got a sharp hook, it's going to get a quicker hook hold, isn't it? It's going to prick it. 
What about things like zigs, float fishing? Do you do much of that? Uh, didn't do it to a few years ago. And I, and I went on a lake, uh, and a deep lake it were, and it was in spring. Yeah. And I seen a f- few fish crashing around the surface, and I was fishing. It's quite deep it were, and nobody was uh, catching. And one of the logs, I asked him, I says, anybody fish with zigs here? Yeah, a bloke here fished a few years ago, but he says that he, he hammered it. I said, but it's finished now. He says, nobody fish with zigs no more. You're scared of zigs now. I thought, well, this is a few years ago. I thought, well, I'll go on it. And I went to six, and that, that was early year. I think it was in uh, end of March, I think it were. I've seen a few fish crashing about. 22 metres deep. Oh. Adjustable zig. Set it up. Took ages. Took ages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> took ages. He said, really line up, really line up. It's just coming up, coming up, coming up. The old, the old zig. And it come to the surface. Pull it back down. Meet on the surface. And this is daytime. Flies away. Yeah. Got, got a fair few. And, you know, since then, I, you know, I started to use a zig. I do use a zig a bit. Mm. I've actually caught catfish on them. Yeah, they yeah. love a zig catfish, don't they? Well, it put shit something because in the middle of the night, I got, I got a run on the zig. I had a zig rod out. And I thought, well, I'll leave one rod out. It was a little snide rod. I put a little snide rod out. Because I, I, I put I put it on the old zig. And I left it and it screamed off at night. And I'm playing the fish for about half an hour. The old leg were going. Oh yeah. It's and you see end. the whisk. And after half an hour, it comes to the edge, and the whisk has come over. And it's a it's a catfish. What do you say? What do you think about catfish, mate? Well, I had a, I had a year fishing for catfish. Uh, I just you know I got a, a year. I thought I'm I'm going for cats. There's a photo at the back there. You see a photo at the back there. It's, yeah, the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big photo, uh, a big old cat. I mean, big old cat. But that's, I don't know what, what year. It's a long time ago because there were no there were no catfish in the Abro then and all that. There were a few fish in the Loire River. Yeah. And the rivers of France. There weren't many. Same. Were was there a few in the same? few in the same, yeah. yeah same. But I, I fished the Loire by, in the neighborhood of Gen. Okay. It's an area, it's, it's uh, quite shallow, but there were catfish in it. Mm. Caught a few small ones. Then I think, uh, what would it, it would happen in Germany. I think a few things went over to Germany, fishing a lake in between Nuremberg and München, a small lake, sort of pay lake thing. It was it a lake complex, it was a carp lake, it were, but they were catfishing it. I think Kevin Maddox caught a uh, hundred pounder, some hundred yeah. not pounder. I remember reading about it. Found out which lake it were. I thought, I'm having some of this. So in April, he, he, winter come, Yes, year later, yeah, I thought, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to this lake. I remember going with my mate, driving down, and it's a crazy thing. Back in them days, I used to work all day. Yeah, didn't think all about it. Just work all day. Come home, have my tea, have a shower, get in my car, and drive eight hundred kilometers Jeez. to this lake in Germany. Ends up land there about three o'clock in the morning. No night fishing allowed. Mm. Way too hard thing. Started fishing, fishing for three days, sleeping in the sleep. You can't sleep, you can't sleep on the lake. Yeah, but slept in the car. Just sat it from me and my mate, sleeping like that. <laughs> and uh, I think fishing every three days, seeing these swirls in this lake, seeing people catching carp, small, you know, a lot of carp, and, and now and again, see swirls in the water. And, mm. and last day, the well, last day before we we're going back, fishing in this back bay, I seen this carp jumping out of the water, and I seen this. It was like at the jaws. See the water parting. I see carp jumping left and right, left and right, going daft they were. And I thought, oh. And I just seen a swirl. And I seen a tail. Yeah. Like, honestly, God, I've never seen a bigger tail in my life. Oh, oh, I'm having that, I'm having that. So I got, I was obsessed with this fish. I had to catch it. I've got, I've got to come back, I've got to come back, come back. So I come back. A few weeks later, I'm back again. This time, oh, I'm prepared. I thought, I'll sort this out. I started reading these books about catfish catching them. I thought there were a lot of nuisance fish. We, 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 I would get the carp in it, so they're taking your baits. Only thing I thought, well, you know what I get? I get some bloodworms. Right. So I got some big bloodworms. Some big bloodworms. I bought them. Cost a fortune. I, I, I bet. I, yeah. think they, I think they cost about three pound a piece back in the time. And I put about three or four, and you put a little uh, uh, size two null hook when it was uh, hook with a uh, poly ball on back. Oh, so it floated, them popped them up. Yeah. You put about four or five of these bloodworms on, cast it out. But if you cast wrong, a <laughs> couple of them fly off. So you think, you know, that's a fiver. That's a fiver. You can't and, get it, mate. And we're from up north, aren't we? So a fiver is a lot of money then. So reeled in, put them back out, put them out and fished, fished another week. Didn't get a run. 
every night sleeping in the car. Yeah, I mean, it was hard work yeah. going back. And I got obsessed with it. I got obsessed. I thought, I've got, I've, got to, I've got to have this fish. I've got to have this fish. I kept going back. And I actually went to my main holidays with my me, me wife. And that was 30, I, can, I remember now, because my daughter were, she was six months, my wife was six months pregnant with my daughter. My daughter's 32 now. Yeah. So you know how long ago it is. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That, that's, um, and we went on a holiday and we went to Austria. And, I, and, I, and I, was, I just kept thinking about this. I, I drove past Nuremberg, München. Yeah. To Austria. And I'm on this campsite and I just. Your head was there. My head's there. And I just says to my wife, says, do you mind if I leave you and I go, go back to that lake for a few days and I'll, and I'll leave you on this campsite? She's six months pregnant. Jeez. We're a little, a little lad, uh, one and a half years old. It's kind of leave you here for because it says, no, no, she can't leave me here. And I, I had to drive about 500 kilometres back to this lake. But I, 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 I was so obsessed. I says, I'll leave you on campsite. I'll come back in three days' time or four days' time for you. But I've got to go back to that lake. She says, no, no, no. I said, we'll, we'll go together then. So I put the whole tent down. Of the, where we're saying in North Alvaro, so as we got, we we'll drove back to this uh, lake, south of it, as, as we need to stay here for a few days, there was nowhere to stay, so I went to, into this uh, pub, yeah, we near, near the lake. Oh, he actually owned the, the lake as well, did the owner. I says, Have you got any rooms in your place? No, no, I, said, I got no, it says, You know, I've got a couple of rooms, but it says, full. But he says, I've got an old caravan at back. <sighs> and it were an old caravan, I think they were, used to have chickens in it, I think. <laughs> it, it, it was rough. It was rough. <laughs> and I've got a six-month pregnant wife. Oh. I have a one-and-a-half-year-old little lad. But I was so obsessed. I thought, I says, well, if you've got to do it, you've got to do it. So I had about four days on this lake. She was sleeping. I think, you know, poor, poor lass, you know. It, it, it was a bit rough for her. She come to the lake at daytime. I was sitting there trying to catch this, this catfish. Never had, a, never had a run of it. And I got oh. obsessed didn't go, left the lake, and I was leaving. I looked at the lake, and I seen it middle. It was quite shallow, and I seen this tail flapping. It was waving. It, all it was, it was standing on its head. It was eating on the bottom. Yeah. And it's seen a massive... I thought, that's calling me. It's calling me. <laughs> got home. Two weeks later, I said to the boss, I've got to go to England. I've got uh, to go to a wedding. Can I, have, can I have Friday off? Yeah. So I got Friday off, so Thursday, that was my last day. Got home, same thing. Worked all day. I, I used to work at building. I used to, have to work hard. Mm, graph I used to have to graph. You, you know, because your little number then. So I was working. Got home. Drove my car. Drove all the way back to... There, it's 800 kilometres. That's mad, isn't it? It's mad. Got that lake. Got a lake in... Uh, yeah, in between. That in one. between. A yeah. couple of hours skip. Lake home. Fishing. Weekend. No fish. Come back. Got home. Weekend later. Same, not weekend, a month later, went back. I've got to go home, I said to the boss again. I've got to go home, I've got a funeral. But I had so many free days off. Yeah. Yeah, only this, I think 24 free days in a year or getting. I had used them all. And he says, I said, I've got, I've got to have, can I have Friday off? No, 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 we're busy, we're busy. We can't, we can't, mm. can't miss you. I so, said, so, well, if you don't give me, I'm going to sack me then. Jeez. I was that obsessed with catching this fish. And uh, I was lucky. It was quite expensive. So, I, you know, I tried to get somebody and I found a, a mate of mine. He says, I'll, I'll come with you, I'll come with you. So we drove down, got to the lake early morning. I knew where I wanted to fish. There was a point going out. And I wanted to fish on that point. I remember coming to the lake, going to the lake. It was really, really misty driving down. It was 800 kilometres and motor. It was, you couldn't see it in front of your nose. It was, it was, we got down about three o'clock in the morning. Got me gear out of the car, three o'clock in the morning. I walked on to the point, put my fishing gear on the spot, yeah. walked back to the car, and just, just gave me, I was sitting in, sleeping in the car. Me and my mate, well, he's snoring away, and I'm sleeping there. And I hear the car pull up behind us, and about five o'clock in the morning, two Germans jumped out, walked past us. I thought, shit. But they walked past us, and they see me fishing gear, they walked back. They, yeah. Scheiser, scheiser. That's all they heard, yeah, scheiser, because yeah, yeah. we, we got the spot. I, I claimed the spot. Started fishing. First light, got the old rods out, flat, calm, mist, were clearing, lovely, lovely day. And I think, and I knew we were going to have a chance of catching these catfish because there were no night fishing. I thought it's got to be early doors. Early doors, early yeah. doors. Nine o'clock come, sun started breaking through, 10 o'clock come. I thought, I'm not going to catch it this year. 11 o'clock, mate bugging off, 
Mm. He, he liked the beer, so he he, he, were, off, he, he were off to the pub. 11 o'clock, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, yeah, I've done my best, I've done my best. And do, 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 screamer. Big rod up. And he just went, just went and went and went. And I'm playing this fish and I'm playing it for half an hour. I thought, this, this is, this is, this is, this is him, this is him. And uh, half an hour later, my mate come back, walking back, he's had his beer, come walking back. I've got a fish on, I've got a fish on. And I'm playing this fish and I got it to the edge and I seen it, oh, it's a big one, it's a big one. And he got it to the edge and he's, he's getting water and water was quite shallow. So we mm. had to eat water and I think about waist deep. And we made it, and he's got this thing coming in, kept going back out, going yeah. in, bringing it back to the bank. Actually, I stood on his foot. He come up and smacked his head, in, into his, smacked his head when I tried to land it. Jeez. Oh, like that, and he, he was bending over, and I just hit him like that. Ooh. And uh, finally got this fish in, into landing net. It was too big for landing net. It was, it was, uh, what was it, the size was two metres, 18 long. Wow. Under, under, under 67 pound it was. That's a big end, mate. That was biggest catfish cart in Germany that year. It was biggest freshwater fish cart in Europe that year. What what year is that? That were that would be thirty three years ago. Wow, that's massive. So it, it were massive fish. There were no there were no there were no catfish in the Abra, 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 through the No, yeah, they weren't yeah, yeah. There were a few fish in the in the, the rivers in France, but nothing nothing that that's big. That's massive, isn't it? But uh, I remember Kevin Maddox caught a big one. Yeah. And that this were bigger. This were bigger. It were, I actually got in Angling Times. He actually from uh, is it eight, Airfield tackle, tackle, Airfield tackle, yeah, Airfield yeah. tackle. They, they sent me two rods. He said, "If you say you caught them all rods, that's that's first time we're sponsoring. If you, you if you say you caught them all rods, we'll give you a couple of rods." <laughs> they actually rung me up, and I thought, "What's this? What's this?" Yeah, what's this? So, and about? then Angley Mail rung me up. Yeah, for the story. Kind of, kind of the story, and yeah. they said, oh, yeah, I caught them on the Airfield rods, Bilby Airfield tackle, and." Uh, that's that's how it yeah, went. Oh, mate, that's a big one. Have you have you ever been obsessed to that extent with a single fish, carp wise or not? Yeah, yeah. Have you? Yeah, yeah. A linear. Oh yeah, so I know the one you're talking about. No, no, it's another one. Is it another, another one? Another one, yeah, yeah. Another one. What? Where was that? That's uh, that was a lake not far from here. It's a bit of a syndicate lake. Mm. Very few carp in it. Very few carp in it. Big uh, lake, big water. Uh. Uh, about uh, twelve hectares, something like that. Okay, it's quite long, long, long lake. It were long lake, but you weren't allowed to fish a lot of the banks. You were only fish allowed to fish one, uh, one, one bit. Of were allowed to fish, and then back in them day, I think there were eight people fishing it, and they all had these sections. So they had their bit. Yeah, the bit because anybody baited up, you put the effort in. You know, you yeah. can't fish that section. You went to your own section, and uh, this fish I wanted, I wanted badly, and uh, I spent uh, I think about six weeks. Fished it every night, six weeks. Working in daytime, working on the building sites, did for six weeks. But the lake is near the motorway. Oh, God, yeah. And uh, every night you go to sleep, you did the motorway. Mm, <laughs> horrible. And about, yeah, I used to have to go up early in the morning because, you know, I work in four days as well. Uh, yeah. Again, up, so I was, I was doing the nights there, uh, coming home, having my tea, going to the lake. Eight o'clock back at the lake, and I fish while uh, six o'clock in the morning. Come home, pick the van up, go to work. Yeah, that's a grind, isn't it? That was a grind, and we're doing it. But you know, I was prepared. I was obsessed with catching a fish, and uh, I did finally catch it. But what I laugh about, what I laughed about that, this motorway when near near the near the lake, mm. you're in the traffic, especially the wagons, and you're here and about. One o'clock in the morning, you get quiet. And about four o'clock in the morning, start again, you'd hear it again. So I was waking up every morning at four o'clock. I was used to the sounds of the motorways. Yeah. And when I did catch the fish and I come home, I couldn't sleep for a month because it was too quiet. Was it? You were used to the I was noise? Used to, I used to the noise all the time. So I just, uh, I was used to the noise. I said, like, I've got to get back to that lake. But I mean, I, I can't really fish what I wanted. It was, uh, it was uh, linear. How big? Beautiful fish. Uh, about 43. I think Kilo, it's a, a few, pounds. 43 pounds. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, 23, 20, uh, 40, about 46 pounds, something like that. Yeah, that would do. They're lovely fish. It's, I've seen a few photos on Instagram of that fish. Yeah? No, it's a lovely fish, yeah. 
caught with another one. I caught uh, on the same same day. I caught two twenty kilo fish. Oh, and back in the day, that was twenty kilo fish for a bit, even with a massive fish in Holland. Then, and I caught two in one night. What do you think you talk there about? Obviously, back in the day when you started, there a twenty pounder, three twenty pounders was mega. What 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 do you think prompts the growth in those fish sizes? Is it time? Is it bait going in? What do you think is because now, like, and we won't say too much, but in terms of a lot of venues around here, there's a lot of carp, but there's also a lot of big carp, 20, 25 kilo plus. They're about, aren't yeah. they? Do you know what I mean? Strain of carp. Is it? Bait. They're seeing it, that, that. Seeing a lot more bait, but I think it's a strain of carp as well. The, the I think a lot of Hungarian carp in there, Hungary from Hungary. Okay. That and the fast growers. I think you've got one in England, they've got a fully scale one, that's a young fish in it. Mm. It's a massive fish, what, 60, 63 60, pounds. 63, yeah. 63 pounds, how old is that fish? 14, 30, yeah. they, don't live, they, don't, they don't live wrong, but I mean, they, they're there. Uh, I yeah, mean, it's mad. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you've got to remember, these gravel pits here, they get more mature, aren't they? So there's a lot more natural food. Yeah. Because I, 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 I was talking about it, I was like, climate-wise, it's pretty similar to us. All right, like it's flat. No, it's, it's, get, but I think it's a bit warmer. A bit warmer. But, but a bit warmer. It's not, it's not 10, 15 degrees warmer, is it? It's not, I don't think it's that, like, especially down south. Like, well, uh, I don't know if you live up north where you live. Well, yeah, yeah eh? it is for eh? me, but eh? I'm talking like where like... You need your bully underpants on there, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> if it's 20 degrees, mate, everyone's in their underpants. But yeah, yeah. the the, um, the it's, it, Corn Valley-wise and around there is similar. And you think it must be either the, the sediment, the, the sort of, as you say, abundance of naturals, the amount of bait they're getting, or, uh, and you've nailed it with strain of cart maybe, that there's the reason why they grow to sort of, you've got a good head of, a big fish by any standards, yeah. do you know what I mean? You've got a lot of carp. But I mean, a lot mm. of these lakes, when I started fishing, I mean, they were the uh, canola, canola, uh, small fish, small fish. But the, even the small fish waters now, you're throwing, you're throwing 20 kilos up, 25 kilos, you know what I mean? It is mad. It's just, just, it's just an explosion of big fish. It's Canals. We haven't had probably anybody on the podcast that's talked or done as much extensively on canal systems as you. Obviously, most English people probably have seen videos on the canal. Yeah, you've seen a lot of it now, you? seen a lot of it now. Seen a lot of video. A lot of there. explorers, aren't they, out there? No. A lot, I think you said last night, <laughs> it, it's a bit about pioneers and you've been doing it for like 30 odd years. But 40, 40, 40 years, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, but, but those systems, that, that sort of canal fishing is probably something that is, it's very different. It's very sort of, they're massive networks of water. I mean, how big are those systems, mate? Well, put it like this way. I think uh, Albert Canal is 67 miles long, oh. isn't it? It's 80, 80 ma- normal, it'll be 80 metres wide. So they are big canals. I mean, there's about six locks in it. Then you've got the the, the Kemp's Canal, what's that, 37? I don't know, I don't know how big they are. Inside, Th- but that's 37 mass- miles long, 10 locks in it. Then you've got the V Canal, that's just a little triangle. Yeah. And then you've got the V Canal, that's 12 miles long, uh, 50, 50 metres wide. It's not you like canals it, we know it, is it? Put all that together, that's oh. one water. That is a massive, massive, massive lake. You know, I think Loch Lomond, you, you lose it in it. You You're put, fishing on there. Talk to me about your experiences on the, on those systems because you've done a fair bit. What's, what's, uh, a fair bit, yeah. What's been, the, what's been the sort of keys? I mean, obviously, location's fundamental, but also That's, how you've gone about them. Yeah. Time and effort, a lot of time and effort put into it. You know, over the years, uh, loved it. When I started on canals in Belgium, there were no night fishing allowed. Used to be a lot of control, uh, police control for mm-hmm. night fishing, and they find you, and they have your fines. Uh, fishing tackle confiscated. So when I started, uh, there were no night fishing allowed. If you got caught, you got hammered. So we used to have to hide as rods. Oh, you still did it though? Oh, I still did it. I know. Uh, yeah. How did you, you do that? We really started. I went, I went, we, to be honest with canals, I knew about the canal systems and all that, and I dabbled it now and again in daytime. Mm. But I remember I was fishing in the south of France one day and three Belgian guys turned up in a van and fishing in a lake and they got quite friendly with me. And uh, one evening they invited me around and says, come for a beer. So I went round and he had his van door open and the, the Belgian guys back in the day, and still a few people do still do it today, they put the photos, the fish what they caught, in the van, on the van wall. <laughs> Pretty quite strange, but I mean, you know, people have them in the houses on, on the, you've caught a lovely fish, they'll have a photo on the wall, stuff like that. Yeah. 
And these Belgian guys had a few photos, and I'm looking at a photo, and I seen a mirror there, and it were, and I seen a, and I a beautiful mirror. I said, where's that from? He's saying from the canal, Gemp's canal. I thought, oh, it's a bit. Annoying. I would chop my right ball off for that fish. <laughs> I would chop my right ball. I says, I, you know, I want to go for that. Yeah, but it's you're not allowed to night fish. And I thought, well, I did a few days, and I thought, well. He dares win, so I thought I'll try it. So I got some gear sorted out. Uh, we had a sort of rod dress. Mm. We had a bracket on it, and he used to rod dress it. He got hanging over the water. What? So you had a rod dress with like... like... Yeah, it, was, it's like a, it was like a metal bar yeah. with an inch on it, went down over, over the bank, and then you rod dress from there. So you fish one rod that way and one rod that way. Okay. But trouble is, if a boat, a load of boat come through, the wave would come up. It, 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 it come over your rods. So you know, you used to have to elastic band on them and like that. And uh, that's how we used to fish. And uh, I think with carp sounders because uh, we were waterproof. We fish with them. What like pl- like yeah. plugged in though, wired yeah. though, weren't they? There were there, there, there no uh, remote wireless uh, receivers. Uh, yeah, it was it was just it was used to have a cable. We used to have the cable. We used to put the cable in the grass and over the the paths. You used to, with your bank stick, you'd make a channel, put your cable in, put it, so you gravel back seen. over it, and then you'd have a 20 metre cable going in and into the woods, and you'd be camped up in the woods, out of sight. Because if they come on at night, they'd come on, they'd be flashing with the lights, yeah. and they just drive past you, they didn't see you, they didn't know you were there. And that's how we, that's where we fished it. You have any to... close calls or not? Oh, a few, fair few, fair few. I never, never, never did get caught for night fishing. Good work. I, I, I got caught once off uh, fishing for three rods. Oh, you're only allowed two? You're only allowed two fi- uh, two rods in Holland. And I was fishing on on this stretch. I remember I got my rods. I was fishing on my own bank, on my own side, mm. or on the spots. And I knew I, I fished it a fair bit, this spot. And I knew I could catch fish on this bank because some come onto this bank. I thought, I'll have them here. But I, I was sitting there in the morning. I seen a fish roll up far bank. I thought, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I haven't seen anybody all day. There's nobody about. I put a third rod on it. So yeah. I wake one across. And it only been in two minutes. And straight on to me, please. Oh, were they? Straight on to me. Oh, God. You're fishing with three rods. You've been night fishing, but in daytime, they can't do me. So I was lucky that way. They didn't have me. Uh, we are taking that rod. It's confiscated gear. No way. Yes, as well. So I, I took, took my rod in. I remember it was a Dower SS2000 reel, wasn't it? Oh, no. And it was a little, uh, I think it was Jim Gibson rod it were. So the pride and joy, I think it was a thing. So they took it off me. He said, but you still get it back when you go to court. So I thought I had to go to court. And they summoned me to court in turnout. I'm going to forget it. It's a, it's a public uh, courthouse. Right. So it's open. Everybody's in there. I remember you sitting, you come in and there's lots of people there. They all, get, they all got to go for in front of a judge. So it's a public uh, courthouse. Somebody there, and block before me, he comes up, he's a, he's a bit of a junkie. He's been fighting with police. Mm. No, kicks, kicks a mirror off a police, police van and he's up there, to be fair. He got a bollock in. He got 60, 60, about 60 guilder fine. 60 euro fine it will in the day. Right. And it used to be in francs, Belgian francs. It's, so luckily it's all euros now. Yeah. About 60 euros it were. And I thought, and he got a uh, tap on his fingers. You naughty boy, you do it again. You you go across the road. It's a, uh, in turn, it's a prism. Yeah. You go across there to prism. I thought, oh, this is a doll. Then Derek Harrison, I come forward. There's still people. So a lot of people in the, the courthouse, you know what I mean? It's all courthouse. Uh, it comes through. Started talking. Fishing with three rods, boom, boom, boom. Uh, end of story. It's about, uh, what were it, about 300 euros fine. Jesus, mate. And six months suspended jail sentence for two years. Are you taking the mickey? I'm not taking the mickey. I got done that. I thought, well, that's sod before me. He's been fading with coppers. He kicks a mirror off. He gets a 60, 60 euro fine. I get a 300 euro fine. And six months suspended jail sentence. But it's under the law there. It's poaching. Call it poaching. So, Jesus. so they, 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 they threw the book at me. And he says, "Have you anything to say?" He said, "The judge says to me, I felt like saying, I have been shagging your wife.' Yeah, I eh? know. I thought he gave me, gave me six or that were it. I says, and when I come out, I says, oh, 'Where's my fishing rod?' I'm real. No, no, 
No, not getting it back? Never got it back. Never did get it back to oh, this day. Oh, that's a joke. I reckon they've been smoking whatever matey boy was on oh, before. Yeah. Do you know what oh, I mean? Oh, they have been. So that was it. So uh, that's the only time I got done in Belgium. And since then, I always only fished with two rods. That's a bad one, mate, yeah, isn't it? It was a bad one. The, 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 uh, the, the, yeah, they made an example out of me, didn't they? Come on, in angler. Three huh? rods. Three rods, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I only put, I put a rod out because if I fish were all the bank, I was fishing with two rods all night. I just put a rod and it only been out about two minutes. Mate. And they were straight onto me, boom. Yeah, that I did, I did get. I never bad. never got caught for night fishing. Only did I got caught once. We had three rods out. I only did because I've seen a fish jump up far banks. So I, I, I will keep them in the laws. I, mean, I, I, I never break a law, do I? No. But you can look at the face, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the actual canals, mate, location, it's obviously a massive, massive key in terms of catching them. It's hard to locate them because they're massive systems and mm. also because it's sort of, even though it's 80 metres wide, the old Albert at parts, I mean, that's a completely different beast, the volume of water and all that. But finding them... Over the course of time, your experiences, the sort of the yeah. ways and things to look for in mm. terms of locating yeah. those yeah. carp in those systems, what what do you time look for? time of year, time of year, you, you build up a picture in yourself. You got to you see magazines, even the VB car magazines. Just look, oh, it's been caught that time of year. You, you, you can normally see where it is and stuff like that. You, you, time of year, you got to be there. Special time of year, they'd be in that area, and they'd be to that area, that area on the Albert Canal, isn't it? I'm talking about a totally different canal. I don't fish all the Albert Canal, I only fish a few stretches, stretches. between uh, between locks. Well, I mean, the big stretches, the big stretches. I mean, they can go hundreds of miles, hundreds of miles. That's you know, what I mean. They can go hundreds of miles, these canals. So, it's what like, are, you, are you baiting areas? Are you? I used, I used to bait areas, used to do uh, three times a week, used to drive there. For me, it's, it's about a three hour round trip. Getting there, baiting up, coming back, and I used to I used to do it a lot, uh, bait spots up. But then, last f- maybe ten years, can't do it anymore. There's too many car fishermen, and you come into you come into your spots, and the, the spots, uh, somebody's fishing, and you can't claim a swim. Even if you bait up, you can't claim a swim. I never claim a swim. I normally just drive on. But you you spend uh, nine hours in a week just for pre baiting the swims. You come to a swim, and it's been took a weekend. <sighs> It, it, you know, it's a bit down. It's, it's a bit down. You get a bit down with it. But I mean, you can't, you can't claim anything. I, I'm not one. Of, a lot of people go up and they start arguing. I've been baiting this swim up. But you can't put mm. your name board on there, your name, Derek Harrison's. This is my baited spot. Uh, so it's changed a bit then. It's changed. It used to be, it used to be when I started on the V Canal, uh, you knew you could bait an area and the other locals. There weren't many people fishing back in them days yeah. on the canals then. And, the respect of you, you had that bridge, that bridge, and then you'd have that bridge, that bridge, and that's how it went. You Within know? that that V canal, let's start early on the V canal. What what sort, what are you looking for as an area to bay? Obviously, the, the you're going off certain maybe captures, but when you go there and you look at it, are they are they boshing out? Are you seeing them, or are you looking you, for other used things? Used to, used to, you see, you see like dolphins coming on. You see them at the beginning, in the beginning years. You see dolphins. You see them coming from the Albert Canal. They come on. You see, you see them porpoising. You see them, and you catch a couple, a couple of fish. You fish, you see them, you go, just carry on, further carry down, on, carry yeah. on. So you get in your car, you drive further on, catch a couple more. You know what I mean? That, that, that's how it went. That was years ago. But then, uh, that that's normally uh, when it's near spawning time, they come into to, to an areas where they're going to spawn up. Yes, okay. I, but I never I never fish spawning areas. I fish, I fish off the spawning areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not in the spawning areas, because normally it's spawning areas, and it's just full of this, Car fishman, car fishman, car fishman. That's the last few years. Right. They all, they all, they all in a row. One car fishman, twenty meters further up, is another one, another one, another one. Yeah. That's not my thing. I'll, 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 I'll soon the fish a mile off them, as you know, they all big old fish. But yeah. at begin, at the beginning years on the V Canal, it used to be sand, you sandy banks. You, were, you got a concrete, all concrete, sand and concrete. They call it. You know, it's yeah. just sand and concrete. It's concrete and it used to be uh, sandy bottom, and you get a weed growing. In, in the spring and summer, yeah, get weed. But if you went on there on a Sunday, you used to cycle on. I mean, it's, what, it's 16 miles long, is it? 16 yeah, miles I long? I think you said that, yeah. yeah. You got bridge to bridge. I used to go on, I'd cycle on, I'd cycle on in the sunny, especially on a sunny day. And on Sunday, not much boat traffic. It cleared up a bit. You could see you could see maybe two, two and a half, three metres into the water. This is the thing, boat traffic as well, because on, on a Sunday, you said this to me yesterday, and I didn't twig it, but on a Sunday... 
I'm thinking from a UK point of view, everybody's out in their boat on the old mm. canals on a Sunday. But here on Sunday, there ain't any boat traffic at all. There's all the, 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 the is, but not much, not much. Just pleasure, a lot less. Not all the... Pleasure, yeah. Yeah, yeah the big the, boats normally, you stop most of them. Uh, right. on, on the Albert Canal, they'd be, be going 24-7. Yeah. But on the V Canal, uh, normally the V Canal comes into the Kemp's Canal. It goes into another smaller canal. Okay. And normally the, the, the building merchants and stuff like that, where they bringing sand and yeah and, and green to stuff like that they're close so you don't normally just park up for the weekend and uh so you get more clarity in that clarity water. in the water and all you get is a bit of boat traffic from the small boats and they don't really you know that don't make much difference but i mean i, I spent about four years four or five years every sunday when i packed up fishing i go on and i get a stretch from one bridge to another bit and it might might be a couple of miles and I just walk on, walk on a, a, a cycle on it. You see the weed beds, you see, you see holes in the weed. Mm-hmm. You, see, you, you see craters. And I used to mark them. How do you mark them? I used to put sticks. I, I put the sticks, I, I, I'd look at a tree, I'd get a mark, and I'd put it in my little book. I had, I had a book full of spots everywhere. Yeah. But I used, to, I used to put sticks on the bank because uh, I was starting working four days then, so I was having Fridays off, so I knew I'd come back Friday. I knew it would be cloudy. Yeah. I thought if I put a stick on the bank, special stick on the bank, that would be it. But a couple of mates of mine twigged onto it. He said, oh, Derek's been, he must be not canal. He'd, he'd find these sticks and he said, oh, it must be a, <laughs> here must, I am. There must be a, an all here and a, a, a crater. So, yeah. and, and they, they were fishing them. So, but I used to, used to mark it in my books. I had so many steps to this, uh, to these, these steps in as well, in now and again. And I used to walk the steps. Oh, it's 25 steps to the right. There's, 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 there's a, a crater. crater. There's a crater. Because you come on on a fr- Thursday, the water be, be you, can't, can't you, can't, you, can't, you can't see your hand if you put it on the wall, you can't see it. But you knew the spots. So I, I spent a lot, a lot of time, I think about four years, building a picture up in wow. my head. And I, and I got it. And, uh, you know, and I, I, one year I really smashed the canals. You know, I, I caught a lot of carp out of it, even, even uh, in them days. But the year later, the water board decided we need to reinforce the banks. Right, okay. And, yeah, it's typical. They, they've got barges and they just boulders, massive boulders, and just fucking all the, all the edges. There's only a couple of spots on the V Canal where there's no boulders in. Ooh. The rest are all boulders. And they put boulders in. So all the spots where I'd spent four years building a picture up where the spots are... Are gone. Are all gone, because it's all boulders now, and it's just, yeah. What's that done to the fish in the boulders? It's made it a lot harder. It's a lot yeah. more difficult. It's because, uh, yeah, you, you, cause after after a while, there comes weed on it. And you get you get uh, crayfish in it and uh, sh- what shrimps, and it's a lot of natural food in them now. There's a lot more natural food in them canals. Plus, what it means, uh, you used to be able to fish on the banks. We used to fish on the banks and then into the water. But the boulders, you know, uh, mm. makes it, it makes it harder fishing. It's harder fishing. It does make it harder because normal fishing in in the in, in the week, you were fishing close to the edges, weren't you? Yeah. As your boat's coming through, the fish kept nearly to the, to the thing. But you can't find the craters, you, you catch them. Yeah. And, and I, I, even back in them days, I was I fishing, I would do it overnight as well. I mean, I was packing up, uh, I, w- I would do my work, going to the canal, driving there. I was baiting up a spot. But yeah. I, 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 I do a night, and then five o'clock in the morning, get up, God, reel in, drive, drive home. Get me here and go to work. You're relentless, mate, ain't you? Well, I were a beast in, back in the day. I were you still in. are relentless, mate. It's unbelievable. The, the the actual captures, V Canal, talk to me about what what you had. Do you have any big and big ones? No, no, or just lots of them. I've, I've caught a lot of fish. I've, I've had a fair few, fair few forties out of it. You know, you know, a fair few. And uh, then one year, I wanted to catch. I can't. There's actually a fish on V Canal named after me. It's called the Derek Common. No way. Yeah. It's a common, uh, what were it, uh, 60, I think 68 pound. I think it was 68 pound. Jesus, that's and massive, isn't it? Unknown fish. That's what I'm on about. The V Canal, the Albert Canal. It's all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, them canals, they still got car with no names. That's what that's what attracts me to it. It's summer, summer. You never know what you're going to catch here. Oh. Honest to God, you never know, you never know. I mean, I caught the fish. Catch sixty eight pound. Nobody knew about that's it. That's mental, isn't it? And it's, that's why it's called Derek's Common. That's wicked. And it was, it was caught, I think it was caught about last time. I think early got caught about three years ago. I think uh, 30, 32 kilo. 
Oh. It's still about, and it's it's every time I read about. It, actually, somebody that uh, somebody read a book about uh, big fish, uh, the world. And I think right. it's mentioned in the book as well. Yeah, that's yeah. mega out of a system, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Like, can you imagine yeah. if you had if you had that size carp, just unknown in the UK canal system? It'd be absolutely black with anglers, wouldn't no, it? No, you can't canal. You can jump over canals in England. Well, yeah. it's not a canal. Is it? It Le- Le- Leeds Liverpool Canal. You can jump over it. You know what I mean? Well, they're in there. We, no, we, 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 we used to do. Oh, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be old Barrowford Locks. I'll be around <laughs> the old Barrowford Locks catching a few carp. Yeah, well, that's mad. Yeah. The, the the Albert Canal, completely different beast, mate. No, it's that is a, savage. A, that no. is scary, yeah. isn't it? No, not for me. I, I remember taking Daryl on for the first time. I took Daryl on the uh, first time, and it was, it was a bit scary, what lad. But, you know, but I mean, Daryl's he's a sight fisherman, isn't he? he likes to see the carp. Yes, and that's a to- totally different ball game. You've got to, you're going on experience, spots, and. It's, it's not sure. It's a big canal. It's eighty ma- It's eighty meters wide. At le- you know, I think this area is wider than that. You know, it's hundred oh. meters. There be areas hundred right. meters. But it ain't deep, is it? We got you said uh, what's the four, average? about average deep is about four and a half meters. Okay. Yeah. V, a, v canal will be about three and a half. Okay. And Kemp's canal will be yeah two and a half. Yeah, it's smaller boats. They don't get they get bigger boats going. These big boats go through there, mate. I've seen them, mate. I was fishing for the old perch the other day. I saw the, some of the size of the craft coming through, and I was yeah, like, "Yeah, but if you, I think if you got Albert Canal, if, you, if you've got the Mars, you get bigger boats. You'll get bigger boats still. Yeah, yeah, they are big boats. Yeah. How do you? That's a completely different out. I mean, for a UK angler to be put onto that would be absolute madness with no experience. How did you? How did you go about fishing that, mate? Albert Canal. Yeah. Just keep fishing. No spots, you, you get areas, especially areas on the Albert Canal. I only fish a couple of stretches on Albert Canal. I can't yeah. really say all, all that all that canal, 70 odd miles. I don't fish most of it. I only fish a couple of areas. No. Are you looking for like slacker water? Are you looking for... Well, no, you... it's not slack water. It's canal, in it? So it's, 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 water's always moving, but it's not moving. It's not like a river, is you're it? Not, are you fishing yeah. out in the main or are you fishing yeah. close? I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, if I can find a muscle bed, something like that. Okay. Let's find a muscle bed, hard spots, you know, where I normally fish. You know, I, I, I like fishing over mussels. Do you? Yeah, I like fishing over the old uh, field oh, mussels. Muscle beds. And you won't believe it, I mean, just under your, under, your, under your top, you know what I mean? Because some of them spots... In the edge, it'll be about two and a half metres deep, right up against the bank. Oh, you beauty. You know what I mean? So people don't realise there's a lot of food in that walls, aren't they? They're just, they're just full of uh, free oak mussels. Yeah. You know you know the free oak yeah, mussels? Yeah, yeah, they like yeah. razor blades, aren't they? Yeah. But I was going to say, the car, the car, the car, if you're against the walls, it's all concrete, so it's full of mussels. There's a lot of food. You know what I mean? So you can fish really close in. And if you can find anything, any features out there, uh, is sandbars and stuff like that, because uh, there'll be areas where the boats, you see where the boats, where the channels are. Yes. Uh, and the weekend, uh, in the week, I'll fish close to the bank. Because uh, of the boat traffic. Because of the boat traffic, I'll, I'll fish closer. But the weekend, I might put one out in the main gully. In the main boat channel. In the channel. main boat channel, because the fish will move in the weekend when it's quieter, they'll move into the main mm. gully. And you, you pick them up now and again. What you had out of there? I think I've been six years. I've had six years out, stuff like you know. I've had, I've had, I've had a few fish. I've had a few fish, yeah. Mate, that's it's it's ridiculous. Got fish. I, mean, I had one fish, one fish on it with uh, a mirror on one time. It was a long fish, it was a night fish. It was pissing down in rain, and uh, I got a rum and I got to my rod, and it just won't come in. It had a massive tail on it. It was a metre, I think it was a metre, mid six long it were. Jeez. It was coming really, really strong. It were three, three scales on its side, a long mirror. I thought, I thought that were a catfish. It, it took Oof. ages and ages. If I had a fag, honestly, I was, I was that disappointed. It was, it was October, it was pissing down in rain. Mm. It was cold. Even to this day, I'll run out in my bare feet. Yeah. I, I do take my socks off when I go to bed now. Because I, I, I'm daft enough, even at my age, I'm Listen, daft enough. Yeah. I'm out with my bare feet. I'm out there in end of October in the rain, t shirt on, <laughs> playing this fish. Yeah. And I'm playing this fish for half an hour. And again, it closed at bank, and you know, it's two and a half meters, and I'm just seeing it will swirl, and it's off again. And it's going back and forth. It's got me somewhere. I said, if you give us a fag, if you had a cigarette, 
I'd do me lying. I thought, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I, it, I, I got well, upset about it. I couldn't, I couldn't land it. It just won't come in. And I finally got it at the end. It were, I would think about 24 kilos. What's that? About? Wow. Yeah, it's, it's 50 pounds, isn't it? 50, 50 plus, yeah. But I mean, mega. Yeah, well, that cold. I was cold, wet. Well, I was happy when I got it. Cold, wet and happy I were at the end. But I think five minutes before, I'd, I'd, if I had a faggot, I'd just, you just, I'd, I'd just burn the light and say, oh, I'm going to bed now. That's you know, it, 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 cause, uh, yeah, it's um, yeah. Some system, mate, isn't it? It's like, some system, yeah. And then uh, uh, it's later, you have the blicky, he caught a big common, another one. There's a couple of big fish in. But then fish, these big fish, I think they got uh, introduced, uh, a group of fish, small commons, two pound Commons, they put them in mm. in the system. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what year it were. It's not not that long ago. They were really fast growing, and some of them really got massive. You know, I mean, uh, uh, you have the Blix fish, the big one. You've heard of the fish called the yeah. big one. Yeah, uh, that were one of them. Derrick's common were one. Uh, Braid rug, that were another one. A big fish, three big commons. I mean, you all well above sixty pound. You know what I mean? Mate, that's the stuff of dreams, isn't it? As a car uh, angler, that's it. And it was putting stocked in. But they were just that special sort of fish. Shooters. Them jeans. Some of them, you know, they didn't grow, but them there they grow. I remember you had big catch this fish because I think it was the same year I caught that Derrick's common. Right. And I'm a, I'm a bit of a greedy, greedy sod when it comes to that. I thought, I want that fish. Yeah. It took me seven years to catch it. But you caught it. Well, I caught the big one at the end. I caught it at the end. How big was it when you caught but it? I, but I, I've got to be saying seven years, but I don't fish... Not every, you're not. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll fish. I'll fish a certain times a year. Maybe I'll do three, three or four months on it, and then I'll move to the lakes and stuff like that. That's one of my weak points. I can't fish anywhere all year long at one spot. I got to keep moving around. You are a mover, but you are. I tell you what, mate. You plan, don't you? You are like a meticulous planner, mate. You'll have bits going here, there, and everywhere, won't you? Yeah, you, you need a bit of luck in life as well, don't you? I don't know, if, mate. I don't think it's luck. I don't think you can be as I've been, modest I've been saying it's luck. Quite consistent with big fish over the years. You know, I've been doing it for for a long time. You used to you, you you catch a ton more than you ever scream about. There's photos that you showed me last night of fish you've caught very recently that are absolutely mind blowingly incredible. They're they're lifetime like fish, but what what really lifetime fish? They are. They weren't. They once in a lot. You know what I mean. That's, I, that's, done. that's that's what I laugh about. People say fish of a lifetime. It is. I'm not dead yet, mate. I'm not no, dead. but that's what I mean. That yeah. is what is. And it, You're what not dead. Not dead. I'm, st- I'm still. You know, I've still got dreams. You know, I'm still dreaming about fish. And I, I, I've asked a few times. A few people have asked me to do. Can we do an article of fish of a lifetime. And all I say, a fish of a lifetime. I'm a dead yeah. Then I can do a fish of a lifetime when I'm dead. Then I know which me fish in my lifetime. Mate, I love that. I lo- I'd, I'd hope to have hot, like even an ounce of that. In, you know what I mean? When you've caught what you've caught and you look at what you've caught and this is the stuff that we ain't seen and you're not going to see and it's yours and da 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 let alone what we what you know about and what you have published, you think to still have that motivation, that drive and still want it that much that you do what you do, which is no. plan, bait, yeah. Always on the lookout, always got your oh, eye yeah. open. Four o'clock in the morning, morning checking yeah. the river out for Rob. Doing all that, mate, that's something else, mate. That is, yeah, mate, it's, it's incredible, to be fair. Talk to me a little bit, and this is this is probably more relevant, obviously, now. You talked there before about baiting areas on these canal systems, mm. about catching the big one. How big was the big one, by the way? Eight six. <sighs> That's the fish of a lifetime. I'm done out here. No, Derek. no, I'm no, not no, touching no, no, another no, canal. No. I, I'm convinced I'm going to catch a bigger. And I, you, you, I showed you a photo last night. That was, that was nearly as big. Mate, that, I mean, let's not even go into that. No, fish. I won't go in. But, but I mean, that. You're scared, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm convinced. I'm still convinced. And I'm not talking about going to any uh, Bay Lake or anything. I'm talking about public water fishing. I don't, I don't want. I, I if I caught that a uh, fish for uh, a bigger fish than that from a public water, uh, from a bay lake, you wouldn't have it. I won't claim it. Nah, I'd be I'd be, I'd be a bit disappointed. Yeah, I would, I'd be happy to catch it. You know, I'm, I'm nothing against. You bay wouldn't lakes. be there, Derek. Come on, mate. Like, like, let's no, be no, no. I I will go if I, I go for a social. I go to a bay lake. You know, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I mean, catch a few fish. Uh, if you get a chance to go to Giantica with Danny, you know, I, I you know. I jump on the board, you know, it's just for a week's fishing. But 
another way about it, but that's social. That's social fishing then. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, but I couldn't be... I, I can't go to a lake. I'm stuck in a swim all week mm. and the fish are up other end of the lake. I couldn't handle it. I've got, to, I've, got, I've got to get on the fish. I've got to move. If I don't catch it, I'll move. You know, that's my fishing. I think it definitely is a common feature, like with the very elite, is that, especially like big fish, but is having loads of stuff about that, that itchy feet syndrome when you know it's not on and you've got something to drop onto. You ain't just going cold to another lake. No. You've got bits baited up or you've yeah. got into Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, right, yeah it's, effort, lot, it's a lot of effort. You know, you, to be honest, you do put a lot of effort in, you know. I, I do put a lot of effort you in fishing. an awful lot of effort you know? in, mate, which is, in, which is testament to you and what you catch. I was saying before, more modern day as a principle, you talked about baiting up areas on the canal systems, mm. your, your stick marking, your craters, how that's changed mm. with rocks. Now, it's busy. Mm. Baiting up areas is not possible. No, it's, really. it's not worth it. Not worth it. Because if some, you come, I mean, uh, about seven, eight years ago, I was baiting, I was going on, I was baiting three spots up. So if I was coming on the weekend, I'd at least have a baited spot. Yeah, I, I don't like just turning up and fishing. You know, I like to fish on a bait spot. But it, even when coming there, and there were, all three spots were took because you're baiting areas where yeah, near a bridge and stuff like that. Mm. Other people, or if somebody sees you, somebody sees you baiting up, you're they, only like uh, flies around shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, you start baiting in areas. I mean, that's it. You, if anybody sees you baiting up, you, you know. You, so what do you do now? Now I'm 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 in that luxury position. I've got a bit more time now. You know I'm semi pensioned. Uh, I can I can if I go fishing now, I can sit on it if I want to three days, yeah. three nights, okay. four nights. That's my way of fishing now. I won't bait up a swim. I won't put the effort in driving, especially the canals. If I fish in a lake, I might put the effort in. You know if if I can get somewhere I know it's not getting fished a lot. Mm. Some some lakes still some lakes where they don't get many people fishing out. And I was, Put a little bait in now and again, and uh, the canal systems. Your your experience is modern time. Are people following you? Are people recognising you? Are people trying to? Because you talked about the culture shifting at catch at all costs. It's a bit like the etiquette side of stuff and baiting spots isn't possible. They're busy. Your experiences now with all the sort of media coverage and everything coming out, people coming over more mm. readily. What's that been like? Just a nightmare. It's getting a lot busier. You see, especially on canals, you know, you see uh, the old groups of people with the all coming on. Three blocks, four blocks. He calls, walk... them, he calls them Nash lads, is what he calls N- them. Nash clones. Nash clones is what he calls oh, them. Alan Blair clones. <laughs> They've all got a Red Bull in the hand and they're all in green. Yeah. And they walk, they walk, they're just walking like a train. Yeah. Walking behind one another and they're walking on the canal. They're looking, looking for fish. I think uh, Henry does it now and again. But they, mm. that's normally on the French canals, a bit more clearer. But I mean, if you go on the canals... In the week, and it's been port traffic. It's quite you can't see him. can't see much. So, bonus, but people do do it, and it is a bit uh, aggravating. Uh, people coming on, you're fishing, and mm. I'm fishing with clients now, and people come on and they come. And I don't know why it is, but they seem to stop on the spots where you've, you put your rod, and they stand there for three, four blocks, drinking the Red Bulls, looking in the water, and they think, oh, and they'll, they'll go across from you, stand across and look at you for five minutes. And they'll go, yeah, that's it. And they think, oh, comes the evening, that's it, they've gone. But now, old Nashy boys, he brought an old lamp out, didn't they, again? We used to do, oh, lamping. The lamping. So they come back at night lamping, and they're walking up and down canal trying to find the fish at uh, the night. So you, you get them 24-7 now. But I mean, you've got to live with it, you know what I mean? Live with it, uh, everybody's their own thing. And normally, most of them blocks, they spend a week on canal. They, they, they normally, they, they come round, they say... Uh, can you give us any tips? Yeah, of course they do. Oh, I always give them a golden tip. <laughs> What's that tip? <laughs> I see that tree on that far bank. Yeah. I said, don't cast in that, mate. You won't catch out there. That's my golden tip. Yeah. Yeah, you need to cast in the water. Yeah, nice, nice. But on the, and you just nah. referenced, you, you referenced it there, mate. Like, obviously, in terms of intel, in terms of knowledge, you've done an awful lot of time and yeah. you've got that built up that, but also you now run... You do guiding, don't you? Yeah, the guiding trips. Which you never it. really screamed about, but I'm guessing nah, you're busy with, mate. Like busy, busy as busy as I want to be. You know, it's uh, I'm I'm 68 now. You know, I'm uh, take it easier. So I've got I've got now normally I've got clients. I don't take many more clients. You know, it's just a few clients uh, just to pay the to run my car and stuff like that. You don't make you can't make a killing out of it. But uh, I really enjoy it to be honest. You know. Uh, 
if I see one of my clients catch his personal best, I get a bigger kick than they do. Yeah. If I see him catch fish, you know, you see you see the smile on the face, but my smile's twice twice as big as theirs because I'm happy for him. You know what I mean? You've got you've got to you've got to you've got to enjoy it. God. I mean, I had one lad come over two years ago and he caught f- in four nights time he caught five personal bests. That's like, mad, isn't it? Well, yeah, I think his biggest carp in England was twenty seven pound. Yeah. And uh, you know, come over and he have got it's got I think, like 29 BB and then 30 odd. And he ended up catching, I think, 52 was biggest. Jeez. Yeah, he caught on a stretch, stretch canal where I think it was oh, the biggest fish. We got 52 pound, you know. Amazing, isn't it? And he, they, all, they all come back, you know. And no, most of my clients will come now. His set clients have been coming for more years now, so. What do they want to do if they want to get? Do they have to message you? Do they message you on on Instagram or Facebook? No, or no. It's, I've got a website. 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 website, okay. website go through my website. You have to go through my website because if you don't go through my website, you can't send me uh, WhatsApp and uh, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go through my website, uh, I don't get because a couple of years ago I had a double booking. Yeah, and that is quite uh, yeah, awkward. Know. Yeah, it's quite awkward. Luckily, luckily I could uh, sort it sort it out. It's, it's bad news. So if you try, the, I, I'm, a, I'm not one of these. I don't keep my paperwork. If you go from the website, my wife sorts it all out for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, she, bu- she books them all in, and that's it. But if I, and then somebody WhatsApp me and say, "Oh, can I book with you?" Oh, it's all right. And then I get home, it's been double booked, and I've got to ring them up to try and change the dates and stuff like that. And it's, so just go from if you want to go book, go through Big Carp Adventures. Dot com. Way. Mate, I'm going to be tapping you at 100 percent for sure. Man, this little trip here, just going for everywhere for a few days, not without without the carp rods. I I, I genuinely didn't realise the expanses of water and and what's about. It's just absolute madness. There's a lot mate. of water. It's madness. There's a lot of water, but in a good way. There's a lot of water. There's a lot of canals. Yeah, there's still plenty of room. You know, even we influence it. You get these YouTube films. You see them coming over. Yeah, it's a lot more coming. But I mean, there's some many cows, but a lot of people. Have, there's so many canals in Belgium and yeah. even the French side of Belgium. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of carp there and there's a lot of un- untouched water there. Potential there is unbelievable. I think I think I think guys from uh Nash have been there, I think they're that end. Yeah. The French side. I've, I've seen a film, they're, they're all pioneering, aren't they, on, on the old canals. <laughs> I, love, YouTube. I love the sticky. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, mate. The, the old Henry Boy were fishing there and the, the old <laughs> lads from Baitworks turned up, didn't they? Yeah, the date uh, works, Nash meetup. Oh, yeah. ah, some, it, what, what it is, mate, it's all good to point decks, mate, that you're catching. Yeah, pioneering, pioneering. We, 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 we were the pioneers. Yeah. We, we, used to, we used to go to France, we used to go to France, we, we just found a bit of water, we just fish it. Mad. You know, just just go. I mean, we blanked a lot. You know, you you, you know, you do blank. Uh, you don't, you don't, you walk, you don't yeah, catch but then when you eat, a, a well, you eat them, but you get, you get a fish, you know, it's something new. You're fishing for unknown fish. Yeah. I mean, there's still, there's still water in Belgium, canals in Belgium. I ain't even fishing myself. I, I'm, I will be fishing. One thing I did want more detail on, mate, I sort of glossed over it before. You named there the capture of the big and that you had 80 odd pounds. 86 pounds. From yeah. that system. Yeah. Give me the, the sort of story, the capture side of that, mate, because that is, and I know you hate the term, the fish of a lifetime, but it is. I probably will never catch an 86 pounder from a river system. But. You have from a canal, eh? not a river. Sorry, from a canal, canal yeah. system. Yeah, you got it from a canal. No, I'd seen it be Yarpy. I had it uh, about six years before that, and I, I was fishing there a few times, every fair bit. Mm. After that fish, uh, before I caught it, I seen it twice. You seen it? I seen it twice, and one time, one time, I was fishing. You just put the boulders in. They've been in a couple of years, and it left a little spot where there were no boulders in it. it just they missed it. They're just in an area about 20 metres long. There were no boats. It was just sand. I remember walking on, and I remember looking. I seen a group of fish in this clear spot between the boulders. And I was looking. I thought, ooh, ooh. And I looked at the fish, and there's some big fish in there. There's a couple of 50s in there. You know. It's fish, it's fish, it's fish, it's still fishing them canals. So it's never, never, seen a, never, never been on the bank. I've seen fish there, you know, 50 pounds, what? Still there. I've never seen a photo of them. Wow. Up close and personal. I've never seen them. I remember seeing these fish and I thought, ooh, ooh, ooh. shaking, shaking, shaking. Got my gear out of the van. Got me up. I'm going to get to them. I'm going to get to them. I've got to fish. I can't fish on top of them. I'm scared mm. of them. So I've got to climb down. There's a little ledge. It's concrete, sloping bank. And yeah. it's a little ledge. It's, a, it's about uh, 12 inches wide. <laughs> 
So I'm creeping on this ledge, drop one at edge, yeah, into the edge, walk back on. As I'm walking back on, I look down, right up against the concrete, I look down, it's in the back about that wide. About that wide it were. Oh, my God. I look down. It's a big one, the big one. <gasps> anyway, I dropped the rook bait near it, got back up at the bank, put my rod set up, mate of mine come on. He's saying, he's saying, have you seen all? Have you seen all? I said, don't walk on there. Yes. Don't scare these fish. I've seen the big one. And that was that afternoon. And I never left it. I just stayed on the spot. Yeah. Never touched it, never went back. Because I've noticed a lot of people, that's what scares a lot of fish off in the days. They look, walking on, looking at the fish. Mm. The fish used to drift off. I didn't want to do that. So I kept away from the fish. And I, and I fished all night and all day. Didn't have a sniff. Walked back in the morning, a little peep. They're gone. Yeah. Shit, that was a chance. That was, that was a chance. Another time, uh, I was fishing further up. And I f- it was grazing with the uh, blocks. You get a weed on it. And I think the bream had been spawning, and I think the the carp were eating the bream spawn. Yeah, I seen a group of fish, and the big one were there as well. But the big boulders, you can't you can't place ring on because it drops in between. You, yeah, you lose the cracks. It. Yeah, you, you, you can you can try and catch it, but if you, you can you can actually lose it. You're probably ninety nine percent you lose it. I won't fish from then. Mm. If I'm not going to catch it. If I haven't got a chance to catch it, I won't fish for it. And that one in situation, but I seen it up close and personal for the second time. <laughs> And that were bigger. And there were a group of fish then. I think they were all 50s. God. On the stones. They were like cows grazing. They were. They were just, I, I think they were eating in the weed. It was getting get a bit silk weed. I think the bream had spawned on it. I think they were eating the eggs of the, uh, the bream eggs spawn. That was second time. But I got fascinated. I was so fascinated. I thought, oh, I've got to have this. I've got to have this. But you're talking about a canal. It can fish 100 miles. <laughs> I was going to say, it. it's mad, it's, isn't it? It can, it can swim anywhere. One so you, it's, it's one fish, you know. You, but you, I'd had Derrick's come and I thought, I, I'd like to catch that one. I'd like to catch that one. I remember coming to a spot. I started to set up. And it's a good spot. And I'm fishing away. And I thought, oh, I'll have a chance tonight. But wind turned. And I don't know how it was. I just get a feeling. I've, I just set my tent up and everything. I mm. put my van away. And I think at 10 o'clock at night, that wind started picking up. And I thought, oh, it's blowing down that end. I thought, I've got to pack up. Got the van, gear in the van. Shh, drove down to the spot I wanted to go. Got to this spot. And we were really blowing into the bank. Mm. Oh, this is good. Now, I didn't even have to, I didn't look for the fish jumping. I thought, I'm, it's got, it's got to be, it's got to be, I've got three days time. Okay, I've got, so I've got, got a chance, time. I've got a three, three days time, I've got to have a chance. Got the rods out, heard a fish crash at night, early morning, caught a fish. Uh, I think it were up at 20. Okay. Thought it's a good start, good start. Uh, seen nobody through the week, I think it was on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, uh, caught a couple more fish, uh, low 30s, it was looking good. Uh, Thursday night, f- 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 Thursday afternoon, I'm playing. The wind's really, it's just, it's gale forming. The wave's coming on, on the bank. I thought, oh, oh this is it. He, he, old dog, he, he were a puppy then. Oh, bless him, Flynn, he, look at him. He, put, he were a puppy with old Flynn. And he was sitting, sitting on thing. I thought, well, I don't want to jump far in the canal. With a dog. And the afternoon, I seen a fish roll. And it went far out. And where I'm fishing, the boats turn and it's, it's a bit of a channel. A bit of okay. a, a bit of a gully, it's a clear spot, and I was fishing into that, and I seen the fish roll on top of it. I thought, oh, that looks interesting. And then two o'clock in the afternoon, little bobbin just shot up, and I thought, is that weed? And just seen rod bending over. What well, slow? Slowly, very slow. And I thought, oh, that's not weed. And just hit it, and I thought, what this? What's this? What's this? Went moving. Mm. And then it's just slowly, slowly started plodding. Boom, boom, boom. And you go, tick, 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 tick. And I go, oh, I can't do anything weird. Mm-hmm. Eh? So I'm, I'm I'm with this for about five minutes. I thought, what is this? What is this? It won't come off the bottom. Just staying on the bottom. And I'm fishing near a bridge. And a bridge, a cycling bridge. And if anybody throws stuff off the bridge, you throw all push bikes. Uh, rubbish, rubbish. You never trolley. know. You know. So I'm worried about this. I'm worried about these yeah. shopping trolleys and 
push by. So if it goes through a push by, you, you know, you, you lost it. His snag is in the canals as well. So I'm a bit worried and his fish is on bottom. But I thought it's quite clear. I mean, I'm in the boating channel, but you're still going to be worried about these uh, muscles. On the oh, the three yeah, muscles. Yeah. They're like uh, standing knives. Yeah. They, they'll cut through anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'm, you're fishing heavy, you're fishing hard, fishing, uh, oh, fishing quite heavy. You want braid? Fishing braid, yeah. yeah. Fishing braid with a uh, 60-pounder uh, leader. leader. So you're okay that way, strong hooks. Uh, I, no, I weren't strong. I was fishing with, with, uh, without rig. I was fishing with a uh, captive curve hook. You know them little green points on? Yeah. Every, yeah. Everybody, everybody, everybody says, oh, they bend, they bend out. Mm. They will complain about it. I mean, I caught loads of fish on that year because that before the Kamakura hooks. The, yeah. Uh, I was fishing the captive curves. I caught a lot of fish on the little green, little, little green the cap caps, on. caps, yeah, I remember. The, the, Good little looks they are. And every, I used to, in the forums, used to read about them. Everybody, oh, losing fish hooks, shit hooks, shit hooks. And I'm thinking, I'm catching loads and I'm, ca- I'm catching a lot of big fish. Mm. And I and I bully fish. Do you? I don't I don't play with fish. I I, I hook them and I want, I want them in. I don't, I don't mess around. I just, I, I give them a bit of stick. Yeah. I'd never had no trouble with them, you know what I mean? Fair. I'd never had no trouble with him, so I mean, I've got this fish on, but I just couldn't do anything with this fish. It just, just won't move, and he's just now ticking up and down, ticking up and down, ticking up and down. And I've been playing this fish for about twenty minutes, and just moving slowly, slowly, slowly. And this Belgian guy come up to me and he said, and he said "Ah, oh, you're fishing here." I said, "Yeah." I said, "Yeah." yeah. I said, "Got one." He could see I'm fucking rather bent double, and he's, he's <laughs> saying, and, and he's next to me. And he said, after five minutes, he starts talking. And I'm con- trying to concentrate on this fish. I've had this fish on 20 minutes. And this bloke's touching me, sh- topping on my shoulder. That's a big fish, mate. I says, you know, I thought to myself, you don't need to tell me that, lad. I, I, I know how big that fish. I, I don't know what it is, what it is. But then the fish, he wanted to go into a smaller canal under this bridge. Oh, no. Oh, oh shit. Because in there, there might be a trolley or pushback, stuff like that. But luckily, I got it moving a bit. I was playing it, and I played it another five minutes. I'm having about, having about, about 35 minutes. God. And I finally seen it. I seen it in the middle of the canal. And it's quite strange in canals. You're higher up than the fish. Mm. And they don't, they look, even, even when I caught the Derrick's Common, in the middle of the canal, on the V Canal, it's 50 metres wide, so it's 25 metres from the bank. You're higher up. You're looking down on it. The fish don't look that big. They look small, yeah, they yeah. look smaller. And when, so finally, when you get them in the net, you realise how big they are. And this fish, I seen a glimpse of it. I thought, it looks a decent fish. Looks like an looks like an upper forty. That's what I thought first time. I just seen a flash on the water, and I thought actually thought first time it was quite deep, and, and I actually thought it was a, a mirror at the beginning. I thought, ooh, could it be the mocker? Because there's another big uh, mirror. The in mocker. The, the mocker. It's called the mocker. I can tell you a story about that in a minute. I thought it could be that. I thought, oh, if it's that, you know, I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be happy with that as well. Uh, and finally gets it up to the surface. And uh, I was glad that Belgian guy was with me at the end because he had to move round and he, he brought me landing net. Yes. And finally uh, landed it and I got it in net and I have a look and I thought, oh my God, what's this? <laughs> but then I'm worrying because it's, it's two and a half metres deep there. Is it? It's on a concrete ledge oh God. about 12 inches wide. Yeah. You've got to lift it up. You've got to lift it up a slope on the top and be by yourself. No. You, you'd, be, you'd be struggling. You'd be struggling. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a big, heavy fish. I mean, oh, my uh, God, yeah. Huh? You, my it's God, what do you know? 30, 36 and odd kilos, isn't it? So it's a big old fish, all bang. So I'll look at it. But I was scared that when I lifted it, the net breaking. So I'm trying to get yeah. a sl- And didn't, didn't, I didn't have a sling at the time. So I'm thinking, ooh, ooh, and I, I've got a sack, and I put a sack under it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I lift it that way, and, you know, we finally go up on the bank, and this blogs come cyclists come past, you get big, you get people, people see you, yeah. playing the fish, so they're all stopping. So I had about 50 people behind me, <laughs> the old spectators. Yeah. And this this guy with me, he was more excited than me when I said it. He, he was jumping up and down, and oh, oh, that's the big one, that's the big one. I was a big one, and uh, yeah, that was that was it. Eighty what? Eighty six uh, plus. My God, mate. Yeah. So when you've estimated it out in the middle of the canal, you said forty upper forty. Well, big forty. By the yeah, time big... it's got to the next double, that. yeah, it's double, it's double, it's just too big. We just filled, just filled it, just filled it. 
I mean, uh, that's madness, mate. Uh, again, bottom baits just fished over. That were that were snowman. Was it snowman? Yeah, bright it, one on top or just match the hatch? It was. I think. I th- actually, uh, what were it? Uh, which bait were it? A big, f- a big fish mix, or it could have been the trigger. Could have right. been the trigger. Bloody hell, man! Yeah, I couldn't even imagine the buzz of that, we're, mate. We're a big old fish. A big old fish. Big old celebration afterwards, Derek. No, I want. I want to keep quiet about it because I see more fish jumping. <laughs> I want more. I want. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I, they, they don't call me the wolf for nothing. Yeah, you, you are, know? yeah. Uh, no, I, I want to keep quiet about it, but I had to tell a few people. I, I, I rung a couple of people up to come and take photos because yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 want, I wanted some decent photos, and uh, I had to wait because a guy coming from Holland uh, he had to take photos for me, and a good mate of mine, mm. uh, Peter Arvins. He actually did catch uh, a few years before that. He caught another one on the Albert Canal, an eighty, a seventy-eight pounder, oh, unknown fish. That's mad. and that was in January. Wow! Yeah, that was, that yeah, that's out. a January. That, isn't that, it? that 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 was that was a, a Belgian record, Benelux record at the time. It was seventy-eight pound, and he caught it in January. It was minus, <laughs> I think it was minus six. It was in the warm water. Oh, okay. Warm water, warm water stretch you were. And he caught it there. Because I remember he rung me up in middle of the night. He says, Derek, Derek, I've caught, a, I've caught a carp. And I was fishing another canal then. I was fishing a canal on what will connect to warm water. And I was smashing it. And I was putting a lot of bait in there. I was catching in January, February. I was started in December. And I was, I was catching every weekend. I was catching about six carp a night in January. You catch six carp in a night. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> It was warm water, it was warm, it was warm water, warm water. So I, he, he was going to uh, the canal where he was fishing, the warm water in the Albert Canal. He had to go past my swim, so it saved me driving. And I trust him, he was a good mate of mine. So he, he put, I give him bait and he put bait in for me. Yeah, yeah. I was putting everything in. Anything. Anything, anything. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just had no bait. I was just, anything. I was just getting uh, corn. Uh, Whatever. Tigers, I just... As long as it were going in, going in, and you know, I was, I was catching. I mean, you're talking about in January, we were, we were warm water, but it was still minus six. And Mate, regardless, as a result, that, well, that best about there, and, and Peter he used to he used to he used to drive past past it. He baited for me, and then go to his canal. Yeah, and he'd fish it, and he caught eight six pounder, and uh, oh. took force for him. But uh, he caught that six to eight pound. I wanted him there when I caught this fish. He says, yeah. he says Derek, you want to catch one bigger? So I rung him up, and he he come round. But uh, when I was fishing that canal, I'll go back to that canal, the canal, I was fishing the warm water canal, what was connected to the Ke- uh, Kempis Canal, that used to come into the Kempis Congo, it used to go to the Congo, the canal, there used to be warm water put, poured into it. Right. So I'm fishing this stretch, but I'm fishing on an high bank, and you had to walk down a steep bank, and there was a little concrete and a little, a little fence, and you were fishing to the right to some uh, overhanging bushes, okay. the, the far bank. And you had to fish locked up, you can't you can't sit with your rods. You 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 <laughs> you, were tw- you were fifty meters off your rods, so you were on top of a bank. You yeah. had to run down a bank, but you you were locked up. And I used to have a a, a metal ring, yeah, with rope, a string tied to me, real angle, bank oh, sticking so in the ground. Die. So if you pulled it, it pulled the rod in, but the, the, it stayed behind the ring. Yeah, um, God. it was on January. It, it was cold. It was cold. You know, it, it was cold. It was about. Minus six, minus seven at night. It were, it were cold. It, everything froze, but it were warm water, and every, even the trees were just icing up, weren't they? But we, we were fishing. I was fishing away, and I, I was catching. If you catch six fish a night, That's mad. I mean, in January, it, it, it were crazy fishing. You know? Loads and loads of fish were catching loads. And one night, get a peep, and normally with people, and do do do, and then you see rod pull on it, just boom, you see rod fly off. But it were on that ring. Yeah. But I don't like them here, but somehow this rod sprung down, sprung up. The ring must have come up. It come off the bank stick. Yes. And I just, as I were walking down the bank, running down the bank, steep bank, to get to my rod, this rod just, whoosh, it were away into water. I dived in. Shut up. I dived it's warm in. water though, I suppose. It's, it's minus six, but it's warm water. I remember sleeping back. It's in the middle of the night. I dives in. And all I can remember, these little pelts of lamp had on my head. Yep. Yeah. I were underwater and I, and I was trying to grab my rod. I couldn't see, you couldn't see how I was feeling. All I could imagine, oh, this pelts of work works underwater. <laughs> light was still, it was, light was still good. You're mad, mate. So 
As I, I, I robbed her gone. I thought, oh shit, shit, shit. While fishing with uh, floated braid. Yeah. So I thought, well, it's going off sun snacks. I walk on the bank and it was about that deep. And he got he got deeper, but I walked on back, and I kept walking up and down. I was doing v, v in across like what? that, and it's up to your neck, up to my neck. Oh my! It's God. minus six, what are you doing? but it's warm water. It's warm water. It's 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 about it's, it's about twenty degrees. Something like you got to get out in a bit. This I'll come to that in a bit. I actually, found. Made me thought. I felt my line. Oh. I grabbed my line, started pulling it. Grabbed my rod, got my rod, started reeling in. Walk 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 to these snags, and it was just. Car was just laying. I, I put, it's still the lamp working on the water. When I come up, it's still working. I'm looking at this lamp and I'm seeing this car up and it was only about an 18 pound or something like that. And I unhooked it and I thought, I'll come back and I'll climb up onto the bank. Yeah. But I'll fully, I'll fully closed, even, even, even with minus six, even, even you have all the heat and stuff like that. I still went to sleep of with course, my jacket yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So I tried getting up the bank. And where I normally just pull yourself up with your own weight, pull, I couldn't do it. I will fully close the weight. So I had to walk down the bank to a spot where I could just hands and knees, crawl out, walk on thing, got back to my tent. Oh, oh shit. Closer in the car. Yes. Car is half a mile away in the woods. No. So I thought, Ray, get me claws. So I started walking through, through the woods to my car, got to my car. Start walking back. I had a duffel bag, uh, all, my, all my clothes in, mm. walking back. And I brushed some out. All my clothes were frozen to my body. Started oh. freezing. My hair, my hair, I had more hair then. My hair, <laughs> I had longer hair as well. My hair were frozen. Jesus. Got in, put the old comb and pumped it up. Standing over it, bullet naked. Bullet naked. I was like, oh, this, 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 this is bad. This is rough. This is rough. Uh, dried off. Started there. Got me sleep back, combing on. Go to sleep. I run my foot about two o'clock in the morning. So I'm coming home. I'm coming. Home. I didn't want. I didn't want to upset. Her. I thought middle at night coming off. I thought get the lodger out or whatever it is. Yeah. I thought I'm not going to surprise her coming home. So I come home. I said I'm coming home. I'm coming home. So I fell in the canal, and I got warmed up. And don't worry, I, 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 I end up. I thought, oh, I've, I've got a fish. This and that. And I thought that just home clothes. Put me some new clothes on. Ah oh, no, I'm not. So I rung her back. It's not going on. I'm gonna. I'm going to carry on. I'm going to carry on. What's the first point? Put rods back out and I caught a, a 42 pound uh, mirror in the morning. Caught a 42 pound mirror in the morning. And my mate comes to take photos. He says, well, where's your clothes? <laughs> and they, were, they, were, they, were, they, were, they weren't hanging there. They were standing there. Yes. They were, just frozen. They were all frozen. So I was frozen solid. It was it great. It was great. That was a great session. I can't, I can't, loads and loads of car. But end of March, on that spot, you know, uh, it started getting busier. Then it's time to move on. You know, it yeah. getting, when it's cold and and bleak and it, all the winter, you see nobody. When it started getting sun started coming up uh, in March, you know, getting warm, and birds started singing. It, they all come out, don't they? But that's that's a feature of you as well. We talked about it a little bit earlier when we talked about um, the chapter around Cassie and being there early before the crowds came. To be fair to you, mate, that's a consistent story throughout your angling. When the crowds arrive, you disappear. Yeah, yeah. The Dare, we talk, we haven't talked about, but the Dare's another place where you were there yeah. early, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, I think uh, 70, 70, hang on, uh, 89. 89, yeah. 89, I think we were 89. I think they've just been started. I don't know if the film had been out. Kevin Maddox made a film, yeah, made the film. Yeah. Turn up on Lack the Dare. I yeah. think it was just before then. You'd got on. I got onto it. I got onto it. I remember coming on. Uh, I were well, well prepared. Oh. Come on. I walked over the bank. Yeah. I got to the, I ended up at the, I don't know where it was. I think a few snippets. I think Dave Plummer were fishing there. Right. And a bloke called Bob Washington. Yeah. I think they've started doing, started fishing there a bit. And I think I got a bit of a snippet from somewhere. And I thought, I'm, have a look at this. Can't be that bad. I remember coming onto it and I come to the car park and I walked at the lake. I thought, what the fuck is this? <laughs> this, this, this isn't a lake. Yeah, this a is sea. a sea. Yeah. I thought, this is big. Where to start? Where to start? I didn't even bring my boat with me. You hadn't had a boat? No, I didn't have a boat with me. Wow. I thought, oh, I'm, I'm not going home now. So I went, I went, I went, I think I went to a city. I think I went to Troy's. Went into a toy shop and bought myself one of them plastic boats. Go on, the boy. Yeah. You know, the little boats, you're sitting, you, your knees are up there. You've got a little like, roads thing. I thought, well, 
he who dares wins. It, you, you can't do that nowadays. You no mm. life jackets all like that. And it weren't busy. And I, I, I went left hand side. I think the couple of blokes fishing on the point of the church because water had gone down a bit. Right. The couple of blokes, the couple of vivies on the point. I was fishing to the left. And the other side of the church, you were the Merlane Brewers. Uh, I don't know if you know them. They well know uh, Philip Merlane. Right. And the guy from Census, the owner from Census, he were on the lake. They were fishing together. They were French guys. And I think they felt sorry for me because they come round every morning to see if we're still alive, I think. More, <laughs> more, more now. And they used to say, do you need anything from the bakers? He went to the shop, they looked after him a bit. And they, they, I was catching fish and... Uh, well, yeah. They were catching fish, you know. I, I think I'd fish to about 36. But in them days, it were all mirrors, weren't it? There were no commons Yeah, no commons, no. They were all mirrors, all mirrors. And that was strange. And I, I, I did that. Uh, I, think I, fished away. I think I'm catching a fish, about three, four fish... A night, somewhere like that. Water were going down, receding. I don't think I was in the best spot. I could should have gone to the point of the church. I'd have been better, but... You were I, were, I, were, him, I, were, I, were, I were catching him just in the night, and just in the night. If I weren't catching it, because the, uh, there was... I mean, it's cow pews, are they? they were, Koi pew, yeah, 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 They were coming through your line. I think they were South American things, they were. That's right. And they, they're coming through your line. They're biting through your line. And you're fishing your rod's eye, and you had your three lines in the water. I was still fishing with three lines, yeah. three rods. And three lines, and one will come through, and then you see you get a drop back. <laughs> it's done, yeah. And you grab your rod, and it's not there. It bit through your line. And then a minute later, your other line would go. You're just, just swimming through. Did you mm, 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 bite through my lines? And a couple of nights, I didn't fish because they got up use. Jeez. So I, I would shoot into a fishing, t- trying to find a fishing tackle shop in Troy's and buying a new fishing line, re spooling, and getting back out there. I was going out there in my little, uh, my, blow my little, up. My little blow up boat. Eh? And the, the, the Malayan brewers come every morning checking to see. I think they were, they were saying, they were taking photos, but they were, I think they were checking to see if we're still living. Yeah, it, bless it, them. It, it were, it, and the discs were fishing about about 100 metres, 120 metres, something mm-hmm. like that, maximum. I remember last day, I remember the little plastic boat. They were, they were light as hell, aren't they? I remember <laughs> pulling it up, and I think it pulled it over freshwater mussel, and it just a big gash in it that way. It were gone. I thought, now it's time to go home. <laughs> it's time for me to go home. And I went. I went back uh, a year later. Yeah. And uh, same spot. I seen the church point. It was free. I thought, but I seen bivvies everywhere. The bivvies, but the church point. It was free. Mm. And I walked down, and I think they were right. And there were the two French guys, and one of them drowned, and the body was still in the water. And I seen it without busy. And I thought, no, well, I can't go on. You know, there's still this body in the water. I'm, mm. I can't fish it. And I, I actually left it. I went to a, a few lakes, uh, lakes, another lakes near there where I, I fished. The crowds came the in. The crowds come in and, and that, that, that was finished. And, uh, but you, I, you have also been further afield, mate. You ain't just in Europe, have you? You've been in a lot of places in Europe, but you've also, we talked last night and, about other places, Morocco is one that came. Morocco, up. yeah. I've, I've, a fishing session that we, we got invited. Uh, we had a Belgium guy he says, "Do you fancy coming fishing with me?" He says, "When when when we going there?" So oh, we're going before Christmas, we're going back after New Year. And I've got a really understanding why she she lets she looks she lets me do oh. fishing and everything. She says, "You know, I said do it." So you might never go at Christmas. So I'm I'm not really a Christmas tree guy, you know. I don't like. Are you not? No, I, I, going to family and all that, you know. I'd sooner, I sooner sooner spend time on the bank. Last, not last year, year, <laughs> year before, year before I spent, I spent on the bank. I did. Did you? Yeah, yeah I, I say I ended up in Germany. <laughs> eh? You're a you boy, mind, yeah. Do you mind? So it says, well, you go, you know, they go to families. You got to go to family and their families. It's uh, Dutch families, and it's it's they, 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 lovely people, but you know, it's not my thing. You know, I, I sooner be fishing. And he says, do you fancy coming to Morocco at Christmas, before Christmas to New Year? I said, oh, I said for two weeks, oh, that'll be all right. Mm. A bit of sun, I thought it might be nice there. Eh? Aklas Mountains, I didn't know much about it. So I'll, I'll come, I'll come. Uh, I think one of the first ones there, to be honest, uh, first groups what went. And we got there and... Uh, this got, is the old dam, isn't it? Ben, what, what yeah, that, whatever it's called. I, I, ben declare, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a clue what it is. I know what you mean. It says, fill your form in when I got to uh, customs on the plane. So fill your, I said, I had a clue. How do you, how do you spell it? I can't even spell Morocco. I can't even spell Morocco. I can only spell my name. <laughs> <laughs> I says, well, that, that were it. I ended up... Ended up uh, it got two hour delay. We ended up in Brussels. Uh, I think it was Christmas Eve, it were... It could have been day before Christmas Eve. I mean, right. I, mean, I can't really remember. 
Uh, got on the plane, two hours delay. They were deporting a couple of Moroccans, and one of them wanted to blow the plane up in the, on the air, airstrip. So they won't take off then, will they? No, well, I wouldn't think so. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. And the people at the back of the plane, he was at the back of the plane, we seen him come on with, 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 uh, with the guards. Right. Come on, two of them, and I think the two guards apiece, and uh, one of them sat in the chairs. And the women and children, they got so upset, they had to rearrange all the seats, so we had to move from the front to the back. Okay. And he were, he were behind me, this guy. And I says to this guy, I says, I'll give him an elbow, I'll make him go to sleep. I says, we want to take off, we're going to be getting late. I want to take off, I want, I want to go fishing, take, mate. I want to go fishing, it's two hours, two hours. It took us two hours and we got there and we get us into Casablanca. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Landed, airport, this is nice. Mm. Go through customs, and I'm sitting at customs, and I don't know what it is about Moroccan customs. They'll, they'll be, you go like cubicles, and there'll be a cubicle there, a cubicle there, and there'll be a Moroccan there, passport control, passport control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they make you wait. And they talk to one another. The Moroccans will go straight through. Oh, you mean the officers talk to yeah, each they, other? Yeah, they talk to one another, and they'll say, and they, they make, they, I don't know what it is, they make you wait. They won't get their own back on you. I don't know what it is. It's got to be something that I don't know what it is. Right. And they were talking to one another, and I look for this wind, and this bloke, we're going to blow the plane up. He's sitting on the customs bureau in the customs office, sitting on a table, smoking away, laughing and joking with these custom blokes. And this, this bloke in front of me, I want to go for the customs, he's, he's talking to his mate. And then after about five minutes, he says, come. <laughs> and then checks everything. Yeah. Go through. Thank God I got through. Yeah, job done. Comes, comes through, comes into this... Entrance all over on everywhere. All marbles, palm trees. I thought, this yeah, is yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, it weren't right. busy. I thought, this is nice compared to Skipple. Skipple, there's thousands of people walking around. Yes, he, he, he was really quiet. I thought, this is nice. I like this in Morocco. This would do. This would do. But I had to go through a sliding door and I went through a sliding door and the door opened. About 2,000 faces looking at me. And then there's somebody at the back saying, yeah, Moroccan, or a taxi. Right. So I got to him. Got out, I looked around the airport, I thought, it looks nice, palm trees. I thought, ooh, huh? this is lovely, isn't it? Got in the old taxi, and we had to drive about 100, was it, 150 miles oh. in it to, to, to the lake. But it's later in the day, we're two hours later. So we were going to get there if we got there at daylight. Right. So we're driving, and we come out to the cast, I thought, this is nice driving on this little road, and then get boom, boom. Fucking, it's a sand track, something like that. Oh. And we were driving through suburbs, uh, yeah, outskirts of Morocco, uh, Casablanca. Yeah. And they were coming up, and we come to this Askersburg, you, you're driving up, driving up, gone to the top, and just before it go dark, sun was setting. Mm. I could see a glimpse of water. You could see the distance water. Oh, well, that looks nice. That looks nice. Yeah, proper. Then we got to, got to, to, the, to the place, got to the road, we come off the track, drove to the lake, and there was a big marquee. I remember walking this market, it was, it, it was dark. And, yeah, it's dark there, it's, it's dark. So I ended up getting in this tent. But with that dark, you can't f- start fishing at night. We said, well, I was start fishing in the morning. Oh, okay. But we're sleeping, sleeping in the marquee. Walk a bit morning, and I remember waking up, and I seen, you just start to come in light, and you see, start seeing a bit of red, red sand in it. And yeah, so Everything's that. red, it's beautiful, you know, and it, it was lovely. And we uh, got set, sorted out. We were off to a spot, a uh, bloke had been, he'd been, once before, he, he actually brought the boats to the lake. He drove there, all the way there. Brought the boats, what I went with. So he, he knew it a bit better mm. than me. So we'll go to this spot, we'll try this spot. So we ended up, uh, it's, we get a block, he sorts everything out. You don't have to do anything. No, no, he's, of course he's not. guide, and you get in a boat, uh, a big boat, and you've got a, a dinghy with you. And these plastic stools on down chairs, you know, these uh, down ch- garden chairs. Yeah, garden furniture. These garden furniture chairs, plastic things. Your tents and everything is on it, so we go there. Gets to a spot, puts his tents up, and he puts tents up. And they like, uh, you know, they're fox tents We uh, sewn in ground sheets. Yes, yes. Something yes. similar, to, very similar to them. We a zip all the way around. Yeah. So he put two of them up. He puts a canopy at the top of that, and he puts a portable toilet in between you. So you got you, your partner, yeah. a canopy in between your two and a toilet, bivvies, and a yeah. toilet in the toilet, middle. Yeah, it's a toilet. It'd be, it'd be a gap of a, as wide as that table, about a metre wide, something like one and a half metres wide. Nice. So if he farts at night, I, I heard it. You know, and if I farted at night, he'd heard it. it was, <laughs> and he did snorty Gunter. 
Is that so, who, you, who did you go with? Gunter. Gun, Gunter Braum. Gunter Braum, a Belgium guy. Uh, okay. Lovely bloke, lovely bloke. He's laugh a minute as well. Same sense of humour as me, you know. He's, Savage. He's, 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 he's good, he's good. I remember this bloke sets us up, he goes away, puts the rods out. You've got to remember, it's in December. Fishing away. I oh, thought, so it's all right. Have a few beers. We slept in the tent night before, so we started fishing. Yeah. Uh, put the rods out. No actual features, proper features, just slowly, slowly going off, slowly going off. Right. The first swim we fished. But he, he caught fish there in the past. He, the time he went before, he caught fish there, so it was a good starting point. So we started there. Evening, I thought, I'll go, I'll have a little walk on the bank, walked on the bank, come back. Couple of, couple of little can, little little bottles of beer. Right. Had a couple, went to bed. Gets into bed. If I get my head down, sleeping. Yeah. I start hearing ruffling. What's that? Oh, what's no. that? And I, what's that? And I start, he, he was giggling. You heard me mate giggling, going to a giggling in his tent. What are you giggling at? <laughs> I thought, what's, what's he fucking laughing about? Eh? Huh? Idiot. Eh? Huh? And I realised... Put my lamp on, I seen a mouse. Oh. I thought, you bastard. I thought, and it, and it, it put mice in my tent. <laughs> it, I caught a couple of mice and he put it in my tent. I don't know he got, how he caught them, but he caught mice and he put two mice in, in, me, in my thing. And I zipped it all up. So I had to unzip it, take my bag out, take my stretcher out. <laughs> and I hit it, hit it, in, I hit it in my, sh- my boot I were. I thought, I what, squ- did you get them? Oh, I squashed them. <laughs> squashed them. In and scraping them up off the, off the ground sheet, oh. throwing them outside, putting all my gear back in. I thought, right, I'll get you. I'll get my revenge on you. But I mean, two weeks ago, and uh, fished a couple of nights in that spot, nothing, we moved, moved. So I went to another spot, tried another spot. Uh, I started fishing in a dry river bed. Right. I asked him where the old river bed come in. I started fishing there. Mm. And I'm fishing on the point as well. Right. And started raining, and it rains in Morocco. It rains. Does it? And I've never, oh, I've never. It. it rains. It rains. It, torrential rain. It were. Wow. It was actually in January because I it, now it was December. I actually seen a swallow fly past an hour oh. before it started raining. <laughs> I, was like, I, I if I, I if I see any wildlife, I'm, I'm I'm always into wildlife, and I see something like that, that gives me a massive kick. So, if yeah. I see a swallow in December, yeah, I'm like, whoa. It's just like catching a fish for me, you know. I, I just love it. It's at that, that moment. And I seen this swallow flying past, and now late it started raining. It started to get. You see clouds just come in, torrential rain. I'm fishing on this riverbed, dried mm-hmm. up riverbed, on this point about a meter above water, and I was fishing just at the end of that point. My baby was set up there. It started raining. And it's torrential rain. I'm just hanging on to this baby, just. Like this, yeah, against and I've just seen the water coming up, water coming up, and I'm looking where that dry river. It was just like a river coming. In. There were trees and everything coming down. So White told me uh, my rods out straight away. I went fishing then, but you, you couldn't do it. It was that bad that that way. Oh. The water were coming up, so my rods had to move my rods off the off the point because it were that were underwater. Moving up the bank, I had to move my BV once. I moved it higher ground. But it's not that much higher, about that much higher. I moved three times that night. Did you? That's yeah. a night. Man, I just mate. just rods. I just left the rods. I just pulled the rods on the bank because there were twigs and branches and everything through my lines because everything come down the river. Just it was one big snag. So you know, it really in when when it dried in the morning, I had to go back to reel in and just cut the line where where it were because it was just gone. Yeah. So, so so it was just all gone. Oof. But we moved three times that night, and I remember last time I was sitting there and I remember sleep. I were knackered because you didn't have much sleep. I was just doors there and I just heard a trickling. And I think the where 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 the ground sheet, unbelievable, it was that high. I think water come round back and it was a bit uh, lower and water started dripping in and it started filling no. in. So, so I had to get my sleeping bag and everything and Yeah, that's a nightmare. So, it, mate? so we, we we moved that after day after we moved there and dried off and then we moved to another spot. And it was actually quite a good spot. And that were near New Year and we says the local says, the local did we want at festival. They said, dignitaries on the village, the town near there. Okay. They, they said, we're coming visitors visit tonight and we're going to give you a, we're going to make a barbecue for you. Nice. So, oh, that's all right. You ain't catching, are you, at this point? No, we haven't, we, haven't, we haven't seen the bloody carp, have we? Bloody hell. We, we've been there about five nights and we haven't seen a thing. Yeah, get to the barbecue. And uh, he says, wait, 
every day they used to come around here. They say, "Do you need anything?" And you get anything there in Morocco. You, you don't drink alcohol; it's, it's not allowed in Morocco. But you can, you can buy it. You can buy anything: whiskey, yeah, yeah. anything you want. So I says, "They're going to we'll have a party tonight, lad. We'll get ten <laughs> bottles of wine. It costs cheap as chips, won't it? Cheap as <laughs> chips. Ten bottles of wine, and we'll get. We used to get crates of beer, and these them small bottles, yellow stubby bottles. Yeah, I think wow, ten crates of that." <laughs> So what, we'll, we'll go out with the boat. Cool. We'll go out with the boat. And uh, we'll enjoy it. We'll enjoy yourself. So we end up going to this market evening. Real as Rob's him. Mm. But that's it. End up to this uh, market. Oh. And these local dignitaries come on. And they, they, come, they, come, they come on to us, didn't they? And uh, one of them were mayor of the town. Yeah. And the one, one lad there, he come on and we're meeting, he introduced him, they come past. And this bloke, I remember him, we were going to him. And he says, to, I'm going to say, it was your God. He'd been, he studied, he what? He, he, he studied in England and he, he could speak better English than me. Right. A lot better than me. He was a clever son he were. And he was he on about religion. He's into religion. Oh, uh, okay. And he was asking who's your God and he wanted that man. What? Um, just, he was asking everyone? Asking everybody. And he, he got to me. Oh, God. And I had a few. Oh, no. And I'm not very, you know, it was, it was too clever for me, this lad. <laughs> it, was, it, was it, was, it was too clever for me. And I thought, oh, I'll have you, mate. And he says, who is your God? I said, Alex. I never hear of a God called Alex. I says, never hear of a God called Alex? Who is your God called Alex? Said, Alex Ferguson? You know Alex Ferguson? <laughs> who is Alex Ferguson? The trainer of Manchester says, he just, you know what he says to me? What Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked off. Never seen him again. I thought, that's God if you there. good enough, save you, save you a ding. <laughs> So I ended up having this barbecue and it end, ended up drifting up. There was just two of us left, me and Gunter. They'd all gone to bed, everybody yeah, had left. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody were well gone. We were well gone. I remember last bottle, we've got one bottle, one bottle of wine left. Cool. And, and, I, and I got it and I poured a couple of glasses and even I had so much and I poured this glass and we didn't tumble a glass. We weren't drinking out of little wine glass, we were drink, drinking out of half pint glasses. <laughs> I mean, we bought enough wine anyway, for, and you know, you know, it's an awful maybe. Last bottle, I'm not leaving it here. I'm going to drink this before I go back to bed. So I poured a couple of glasses and I looked at it and I, and I, I was well gone. And I thought, <laughs> that's not clear. That looks oh, a bit, that no. looks a bit brown. I said, see you, days. Oh. You stay down, stagger back to the tent. Don't know, I got back there. I think we fell over about 20,000 times, but we got back to the tent, crashed out on there. Seven o'clock in the morning, woke up, just turning light. Just sitting on me, oh, that head, that head. Oh, my head, my head. Oh. Then, I, oh, 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 my stomach, my stomach. So I shot off, shot out of my sleeping bag, sat on the portal toilet. Yeah, in between, yeah. In between. And that was it, just come straight through me. I think, I think it, it could have been the meat. It could have been that bottle of, last bottle of wine. I think it were the last bottle of wine. It just there. And I, I was just glued to that toilet. Talk about the ring of fire. Oh, and it's actually, that was first of January. It was, it got, it was getting that bad. I thought, oh, it's, a bit, it's a bit awkward as this. I says to the guns, I'm going for a swim. First of January in the lake, in the mountains there, wow. Aquas Mountains. Wow. I thought, I'll go in the lake. It'll cool me ass all down. <laughs> Guy come in afternoon, he says, and I didn't realise cold water and piles, it makes it a lot worse. Does it? Ar- Ardens, Ardens are more, oh. it makes it stiffer and it hurts, it gets tighter, doesn't it? And I thought, <laughs> oh, oh. And this guy come around, he says, do you need anything? Do you need any jam, beer? I says, pile cream. Yeah. What is pile cream? And I'm trying to explain to him and he, he won't understand, so I just fucking... Drop me, drop me pants. I said, have a look at that, mate. And all I got oh. were, ooh la la. <laughs> he says, no, 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 I cannot do that. We need, to, we need to go to the city tomorrow. You have to come with me as well. So next morning, next morning, he drives down his Land Rover. Yeah. Been fishing, I think, well, seven, eight days now. Haven't seen a fish. Sure. I says to Gunther, I says, he's fishing now. I says, are you staying with Rods today? I says, stay with Rods as well. Leave me, you know, I said, leave me, he says, it's just pointless bringing him in, you know, we haven't, we haven't seen anything. Is he going with you, Gunter? No, no, I couldn't stay in with Rods. Oh, so you're keeping so yours I'm, in? He, I says, I'll leave me Rods in, is he okay? He says, I'll leave me in, he says, you know, if we catch anything, you know, it's always got a chance. Honest to God, 
We haven't, I don't think we drove one and a half mile in telephone. I've had one. No. I've had one. Oh, is this, a, is this on your rod? Oh, my. I was really, really happy for him. You know, I mean, we you don't, were. you know, we, we fish together, we die together, we, we suffer together. But I says, Gunter, if you don't mind, I want to go this, I want this cream, it's more important than this, seeing this fish. And he caught a 40 pound common from there. It was a big fish. It was a beautiful fish, to be honest. It was perfect. Colours were perfect. Mega backdrop. Uh, yeah, everything. Scale perfect. It was, it was fantastic. It was, yeah. It's a, I'd chopped my left ball off for that fish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, so I ended, ended up going to this, uh, down, it were down, went into this building and it was just full of people. It was like the part in the Red Sea. Well, when you came in. When I came in, because I think we were one of the first Europeans there, weren't we? They don't think they went in oh, this mountain, okay, but you okay, didn't okay. see many people. So you just opened up and I, they let me to the front. She so gave me some cream, come out, did his shopping. And he says, well, I, I, I went with him, you know, I walked up, walked up, and I walked a bit fucking <laughs> like John Wayne you know, through the market. And we ended up going uh, to Top End. There were livestock, weren't there? Chickens and stuff like oh, that. Oh, no, no, no. And uh, What, like live animals? Live animals. And, and I remember two blocks, I seen them hitting one another's fist and then smack, 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 smack. And I thought, endly, they, 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 they bought a goat, but the goat had a young weed. Young goat with it. Yeah. And he got the goat. And I've never seen, I'm honest to life, I've never seen him do it so quick in my life. He cut his throat, he put it on hook, he skinned it, he chopped the head off, rolled what, this. The, the, the little one? No, the big one, the, the, the mother goat. Oh, no, no, no. Threw it in a corner with the other skins. And the, the young goat went to the, to the skin oh. and the head. And went, eh. oh, I thought, oh, that's barbaric. Went further on, they were, same with chickens. They were chickens, they, they cut the throats. And they have a, a sort of trummel we uh you know uh, brushes sweeps. Right, yeah, yeah. I, I can't I just take it do it just do it to me. It's a sweep it is and it's got brushes on it and they put it in and <laughs> it, it, it takes the feathers off. Jeez. It was bruised their buggery, but I mean that that were it. End up going back to back to camp. Uh I thought before I look at fish, I'm gonna get this cream up my arse. Oh god. So yeah. squeeze half shoe up my arse. Five minutes later, perfect. No trouble. It, that's, that's how quick it comes and goes. I've got my little pile of cream, I'm happy. So I, I, I felt I felt free. I felt like a new man. I could, I could dance. Eh? Yeah, I, yeah. I could dance. I could do the whole little dancing now. Got the photos done. Lovely fish. Really, really happy. That was it. Enjoyed this time. But in between, I'm still looking every every night. I'm looking. I'm turning stones over. Looking, looking, looking. Oh, I still have me every revenge. And... Uh, what are you turning stones over for? I'm looking for stuff. What uh, to get back at him? To get back at him, but in between, I think it was what we third or fourth of January. Okay, sun come up. It got really hot. It's, it would it would cool down at night. It would, you know, you had to put a jumper on and a, and mm. a, and a jacket on. But in daytime, you, you, you I could go topless. I mean, I could take a bit of sun. Uh, but Gunter is a bit pale skinned. Okay. And he's sitting there with his little CC Moore hat on his wear, and his little hat on his wear, cap, sitting there. And I says to him, I says, Gunter, I said, Pat, watch out for this one. We're in the mountains here. Yeah. It's dangerous. I says, uh, I says, get some sun cream on you. And he shot into his tent, he's rooting through, and he started swearing in his Dutch Belgium language, go for Dom, go for Dom, go for Dom. And he come out, he says, I can't find it. I said, what can't you find? I said, I can't find my sun cream. So I says, do you want some sun cream? So I'll give you some. So I went into my tent, give it to him, watched him, smear yourself in, or straight and everything, and all put itself in, all this sun cream and everything. I thought, he said, I'm protected now. And he sat down, he says, I'm right now. And I looked at him and I started smirking. He said, What have you done now, you bastard? What have you done now? No. And I looked again, I says, What's that on your nose? Whoa, 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 whoa. And he's, he, he's a bit nervous around me. Yeah, yeah, What, yeah. what? That's what I said, you know, it's something brown on your nose. I said, oh, fuck. And he says, what? I said, I think I'll give you the wrong stuff. I'll give you that bowel cream instead of his own cream. <laughs> no. So I gave him this bowel cream. He rubbed it all into himself. <laughs> and in cold water, he can't wash it off. It's like a wax, in it? So he, you try putting water on, it makes it worse. 
he goes more. <laughs> so he had to walk. I think about six days. He had this pile cream on his face. Oh, that's bad. But you don't get another wrinkle, does he? Cleans your face. So <laughs> yeah, you no know, wrinkles yeah, yeah. no more. I says, ah, you bastards. Let's keep off my rods next time. Leave me rods while I come <laughs> yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I got my revenge. Not to end the trip. It went the last couple of nights. Moved another time to a spot. Tweaked to me. Well, we're looking for I couldn't find. But I seen a, uh, on, the, on the mountain, I seen a, a, a point and there's some trees around it and it looked lovely. I said, I'm going, to, I'm going up there to take a couple of photos. Mm. That's for my excuse. So I got my little Tupperware thing, I shoved it down my shorts. He couldn't see it. Went up there with a little camera, taking these photos. First thing I thought, photos, I'm looking on these rocks. First stone I turned up, I found a scorpion. Oh, my So I found God, a twig man. and I put it into, cut up where it him, a bit further, found a couple more stones, found a couple more. No, I got no, three no. of them, I got three, I found three of them. Took some lovely photos, actually a lovely, I got a lovely photo uh, looking down the lake, miles away, and you see one little tent, bivy, on the point, two little bivies. That, you do that, like your photography, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it, it was lovely. So it was lovely. So got back and uh, Gunter, he always, he, after his tea, he always went for a little walk. He went for a little walk. I got my little Tupperware thing out, zipped his tent open, oh. opened his, zipped his uh, sleeping bag home. Sleeping bag? Yeah, I put one in his sleeping oh, bag. Oh, mate, that's madness. Put one in his sleeping bag and then zipped it back up and I heard footsteps. I went, ooh, ooh. So I threw, threw the other two behind him back, zipped his tent up, sat outside, grabbed the beer, started drinking beer, had a few beers. And I said, Ugh, I'm having an early night tonight. I went to bed, I had a little smirk on my face, a little smile on my face, sleep late now. Well, I'm not sleeping, I'm listening. And I was going to, I always, I always, I always, had, I always had one beer extra. I always had one before he went to right, bed. Right. You know, fair enough, fair enough. He had enough beer, you know, it didn't bother me. So he, he having his beer and I was waiting. I thought, I hope he not to have another one. And he, and he, he actually had his beer. And he had a zip door home. Yeah. Zip door closed. Oh. Lamp. A bit rustling about. Because you only, you only a metre from him. You know yeah, what I mean? Of course you can hear. Yeah, yeah. Then I heard. Then I heard. Look, you know, you're trying to kill me. <laughs> trying to kill me. Oh, my He says, God. what, what, what? This is scorpion in my tent. What are you doing? What are you doing? I said, no, oh, oh. I started laughing. I, I, I just cracked up. Um, he come out and he zipped mine over and his fucking eyes were really raging. Oh, mate. And he says, what are you doing? What are you doing? He said, and he put, he, he threw that one. He got that one out. Was he that sleep, the one in his sleeping bag? His sleeping bag. He just oh, sleeping God, bag, mate. cleaned it. And then he noticed, <laughs> I think when I threw him back, I think one had started coming under his stretcher and he seen it there on the ground. And he grabbed that one. And he says to me, he says, how many scalpers did you put in my sleeping bag? In my, in my stretcher, in my, in my tent. I'm saying, ten. Oh. I only had three. <laughs> I could only find three. I put, so I put ten in. Poor, poor sod. Every bit of gear out. All oh, his bag. All his clothes. you wouldn't you? Yeah, and it's pitch black, isn't it? It's pitch black. <laughs> eh? I think he spent about three, four hours. I don't think he slept that night. That's dark, eh? mate, that is. I says, oh, that's revenge what you did on me with them mice. Oh. So I did it. Is he trying to kill me? But actually, them scorpions there, if you get a sting off, it's like a bee sting. I don't think they kill you. Well, I well, don't think they kill <laughs> I you. I don't mate, think. that is brutal, isn't it? Yeah, well, that was it. That was it. And uh, ended up, uh, trip finished. And we ended up uh, going, uh, I said, I want to sit down. Yeah. To, to guys, can we see the dam before we go? Because we were halfway up, three quarters of the way up. So you couldn't see the dam. I said, I want, I want to go and see the dam. I remember driving to a dam in Land Rover and I seen a military post. Yeah, right. And they were all sit, sat outside and there was guards at the beginning of the dam and guards Ooh, at the other end. Okay. And we stopped on the dam and, you know, he'd get the old camera out and then saw the guards walking down and I, I just seen these guards and I shoved my camera under my jacket under me, under me, so nobody could see it. Mm -hmm. And this uh, Danish guy, I think he was still taking photos and just straight up to him no trouble. Just to open this thing and the film roll in. Just pulled oh, the film, film roll and just whoosh, pulled the roll, just threw it away. And that's all this film roll, but it, it finished Jeez. trip from thing. You know, they just were really destroyed it. Destroyed it, yeah. Destroyed it. So that 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 was it. So uh, but, but you didn't so you didn't actually catch one? No. 
Have you been back? No? No, I want to go back. I want to go back. I will, oh, I ain't I will, going I, with you, mate. If you uh, do no, 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 no. I'm, I'm quieting down a bit since them days. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd love to go back. Even it, just the atmosphere there. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's fantastic place. Beautiful mountains. Uh, fantastic sunsets. Yeah. That red. Rare rock. Mountains. Yeah. It's beautiful. Fish aren't that special, but it don't matter. It's not about the fish, is the it? Place, it's the place. It's the place. I didn't like anything with authorities, police, uh, yeah, customs, yeah. anything like that. I didn't like that. But the people were really, really friendly. Yeah. Uh, what about what about the future, mate? Let's go. Let's go up to now. Where you're still as motivated as ever. You've still got access to great fish. Yes, you might want to go back to Morocco and take some revenge. I'm guessing you don't want to go back to maybe the likes of Dadaire and places that have become popular. And no, sort of no, 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 no. Well, well, what's, what's, what's Derek Harrison's future look like in terms of your angling? You've got your guide in. That is what it is. It's sort of more maintained. It is what you want to do when you want yeah. to do it. What about your, your fishing, mate? Still motivated. Still motivated. Still keen. Still, still, still got a lot of goals. You know, it's last year. Didn't take nobody in October. Mm. I went October for myself and just got some very few special fish and it's still a few fish I want from that lake. Here? Holland. Anywhere uh, else? Germany. I want to go to Germany mm. um, to gain him. Germany quite secretive, aren't they? Yeah, mega carp. Uh, there's, there's so-called information out here <laughs> about the canals. It's just suck it out here, you know. You see, you go to the meetings and it's like that. It's like... Yeah, so, but ask for anything back? No, 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 no. They, they, they don't. They don't want you there. No, I, I can understand it. They put the wolf with, with the sheep, and you know what it The happen. wolf. That's what Pecky calls you as well, isn't it? He calls, the wolf. Me, he calls me the wolf. Yeah, you yeah. are that though, aren't you? No, I'm not bad. I fish. Yeah. I fish. No, yet. I don't mean in that sense of like you're going to kill people, but you you are on your own. You do your own thing, and you get it done. Mate, yeah, I do. Do just quietly go about what I'm doing. I've been doing for all my life, really. You know, especially the last. 30, 40 years. What are your thoughts on the UK scene now or what you know of it or see of it? Would you go, ever consider going back to England to do any fishing? A couple of lakes, maybe for the fully scale, that fully scale, that big. Yeah. Uh, it might, might be worth it. I mean, if you get invited to Church Lake, I might, well, your yeah. lake, I might, I might, might come there, that for it. But, but to be honest, God, why why in, does anybody want to go to England fishing when we've got this fishing over here? Mm. just can't understand it myself, you know what I mean? It's incredible out here. Uh, why, why, why fish? Why, why do you want to go on a lake uh, where it's full of fishermen? Yeah. We well, could have a lake here maybe one or two people. If you look, you know, you're getting busier over here. But I mean, if I go on a lake and there's three, four blocks fishing, I won't fish. Yeah. I'm off. You know, I'm not interested. Mate, you're a boy. From the conversations we had in the hotel to this podcast, and we've only scratched the surface of the things you've done, mate. Honestly, it is incredible what you've created, what you've done, what you've caught. And also, and I said at the very start of the podcast, the sort of, in by a faction of people who know, who have been around, who have done it, they know what you've done and you are held in the highest regard and rightly so. But a lot of people will not know or will not even, even now will not know half of what's gone on. You are, you've done an incredible amount, you've caught an incredible amount and you've done it your way and carved your own path, which for me... When I look at people, and it doesn't matter what you're into or what you like doing, somebody you can facilitate a life and make that happen on their terms, the way they want, mate, the utmost of respect and admiration to you. I really genuinely mean that. You're an absolute legend, mate, genuinely. No, it's just something you, you enjoy doing something. Yeah. You do it, don't you? You know, I enjoy it. I enjoy it, and they don't enjoy it. I'll stop. You I mean. will stop. But, you know, if, if it gets too much, you just say, no, nah, it's too much. I'll just, I'll just stop. If anything happens to my wife... Yeah, you yeah, never yeah. Know. And, you know, priorities kick in. You know, I do, I do enjoy spending more time. I mean, children are growing up now, aren't they? Mm. So I try and get home at weekends. I'm not, I'm not a full time fisherman neither. No, 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 no. no, no. no. I, I fish normally. I fish three nights. If I'm guiding, I'm, I'm, I'm then I'm fishing. Yes, yeah, but, but my own fishing now, my own personal fishing, even uh, last year, I won't do more than it sounds a lot. Four nights in a week. Mm. Normally, it's three nights a week. I fish three nights a week. 
Mate, you've made it happen. You've created it. It is what is it. And I massively appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, but also inviting me into your own, mate, because I've invaded your own, mate, for a, for a good few hours. You're right. You're welcome. You're welcome, mate. You're well, welcome. It must be the Lancaster sort uh, of nice spirit, it. isn't it? Lancashire. 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 Right. Well, you know, we're not all dead, are we? <laughs> no. Uh, you can, no. You've had a coffee, haven't you? I've had at least one cup, mate. I've but had a wealth of experience. I'll charge you that in a bit. Yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, invoice is coming. It's to <laughs> Kevin Nash. No, yeah, yeah. No. Before you go, I've got some quick fire questions for you, all right? You're not scripted you don't know what these are but you'll be fine mate um canal river or lake for the rest of your carp fishing days what type of venue would you select out of those three river river because it's unknown still unknown fish Good even man. even the canal is unknown fish but rivers i've still i've still got a dream i, I, I want to catch a 60 60 pound from a river i can caught it i've caught 50 man got 60 You'll do it, mate. But it's, it's yeah, it's a time, isn't it? It's a time. You'll get it done, mate. I don't doubt it for a second. Your favourite fish of all time? Oof. I caught a lot of fish, mate. Caught a lot, <laughs> lot of nice fish. Oh, no, nice yeah. fish. A uh, couple of linears I've had. Fully scaled. Beautiful fish. Big, big fish, big fish. But to be honest, I think my favourite fish is my next fish. Oh, I love that, mate. Your next fish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very Honest good God. answer, mate. Very good answer. Yeah, it's got to be next fish. Um, three celebrities that you would take fishing. Celebrities? Yeah, it could be past or present, dead or alive. What? Yeah, who are they? <sighs> it's got to be Alex Ferguson. God, Fergie. Yeah, he'd be a good one, to be fair. It's good, yeah. Uh, Billy Conley. Oh, mate, you and Billy Connolly on the bank. It's a laugh minute, isn't it? Might be madness. I think, I think we can't understand one another, but I think we get on. We yeah. laugh one another. Yeah? Yeah, it's got to be, uh, yeah, Alex. Uh, third one, third one. Who would I like to take? It's got to be a celebrity. Yeah. Yeah, I like, like, yeah. That's a hard, that's an hard one. Tricky, you've done well on the first two. Yeah, I, I like Alex Ferguson and uh, Billy Connolly. He's, he's, he's good. It's an interesting uh, mix, that, though. Yeah, it's, but they're both Scottish as well. Have you noticed? Yeah, there is a bit of a real uh, northern sort of yeah. Highland connection, isn't there? I do I do, I do, do like Roy Keane. I'm you a, take Roy? It's very Man united is isn't it? Uh, well, I'm Man Roy United. Roy and Fergie aren't. ain't getting on, are they? Well, it'd be good to see them on bank together, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be a good laugh, that. Yeah. Uh, He's a he's a character, isn't he as well, man? Broken. He he, spe- he speaks his mind. Oh yeah, no bullshit because that's can't do bullshitters. I like that. It's a good free mate. It's a good free. Yeah, it's well football. In fact, yeah, football. Two footballers and a comedian. Yeah, but that like Billy Connolly, he does make me laugh. There's a few of them make me laugh. Well, he's a uh, yeah. You go, I like, I like Billy Connolly. I like do like Billy Connolly. Uh, music, drum and bass, or country and western? Which one are you picking, man? I like old music. You know. You got to like, pick one of those two, though. Yeah, Cr- give us drum and bass, then. Would you? Yeah, yeah. I can see it, mate. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, if you had to pick one person to catch a carp to save your life, who is that person? Oof, it's quite awkward. I, I've known a couple. Yeah, yeah, a couple. You got to pick one. Pick one. It's got to be Daryl, hasn't it? Daryl Peg. Yeah, good. Yeah, good yeah. shout. Good shout. Um, uh, if you fished. Anywhere in the UK, and you had to, where would you go? Would you go to a unknown river system, or would you go for maybe something like a known fish like that? Fully, that's hard because unknown river system. Well, what's what's, well, what's swimming around in it? Is any decent fish swimming around in it? You don't know, do you? Because they're unknown, so I can't give you a quanti- quantified sort of sixty pounder guaranteed. I do, I do like that fully scaled. Uh, that's a good fish, isn't it? But it's a few people scarred now, aren't they? It's a known fish, isn't it? I, I prefer catching fish with no name, so it's got to be river, I think. Yeah, good, yeah. good answer. Uh, one thing you couldn't go fishing without, the most important thing? My dog. Yeah, good old Flynn, mate. No, he's been going he's all my life. I've had dogs all my life on water, haven't I? Yeah, he's seen he's, a bit, hasn't he? He's seen, a, he's seen a lot. He's getting old now, he's 12. Bless him. It's a good job there's no smell uh, thing on here because he's been farting all morning, hasn't he? Yeah, uh, bless, he's all right, mate. <laughs> but he's right, he's 12. He yeah. never, never, never allowed on the bank, but uh, on the settee, but he, he sleep yeah. under there. But he's, 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 he's earned it after all these years. 100%, boy. Yes. Yeah, he's chilled yeah. out and happy it's, there next to dad, isn't he? Oh, uh, Last question, mate. A night out on the bank or a night in with the missus, which one are you taking? 
I like them both. That's fair. Which one are you having? Tomorrow night, I'm giving you the option. Tomorrow night? Yeah. Well, I've been, I've been all, I, well, I haven't fished this month, so I think I'll, it'll be a night on the bank, I yeah, think. Yeah, good man. <laughs> Honestly, Derek, you're an absolute legend. Thank you guys for watching and listening. I'll be back soon with another Nash Off The Hook podcast. Until then, Derek Harrison, I can't thank you enough, mate. You're a legend. No, thank you for having coming over, mate. I've enjoyed it. Thank you.